Nashville because you don't have to get in any of the traffic jams at <laughs> <and> rush hour. <laughs> <sighs> all the little back ways. Yeah, you probably know how to operate online. Man, yeah, I just like kind of how you like operate online. Years, you know, ten you years take even. the long way and wait in traffic, or you can you can know how to duck and dodge. <laughs> all right, boys, here we go. Uh, for those of you turning in, hello, everyone. Another week, another episode of SEO Unmasked. This is our 10th week, keeping her strong on October 5th, 2017. I'm Garrett Groff. I'm Steve Romley. I'm Vindaletta. And I'm yeah. Mr. Nobody. Yeah, we have a very <laughs> special guest that is remaining somewhat anonymous this week. Uh, we will call him Bill for all intents and purposes. Or the Dark Knight. He said the Dark Knight. I like the Dark Knight better. Yeah, let's go. With the I dark like night. the Dark Knight better too. I like the Dark Knight. <laughs> go with the Dark Knight. Because all the all the elements are there. I mean, we got a Batman building here. I got a little mountain hideaway. I blast down here on the bootlegger trail on my Camaro uh, <laughs> with the top down, and yeah, yeah, it's a it's a good life. Awesome. That, sound, that sounds more fun than me sat here in the spare room so I don't wake the baby with a glass of wine. <laughs> <laughs> I need to get the. I need to get my. I need to get my. I need to get my Camaro game going. Dude, just just come down here. Come for a visit. <laughs> I was just saying, I haven't been in Nashville for like ten years, so that sounds like a pretty cool idea. Oh, yeah, I mean, it's just. Oh, Van oh God, Vanderbilt. Uh, oh, God, what is, I'm driving by the campus right now. I'm literally looking at it. I mean, it's great. Vanderbilt's a great school and all that stuff, but um. Let's just say my interactions with it haven't been the greatest. Although I do love the, <laughs> I do love the golf that Vanderbilt offers. I can I can say that for sure. Cool. Uh, this week, first on the agenda, um, you know, everyone's been talking about the Equifax hack, whatever happened. Um, and Steve found a little cool article. This isn't a joke. The IRS has just hired Equifax safeguard. Um, Hired Equifax to safeguard the taxpayer data. So it has to make you wonder what the fuck's going on with that when they obviously can't protect their own data. Nonetheless, <laughs> yeah. the taxpayer information... It yeah, sounded like a really good idea to me. I thought that was a smart play by the government because, you know, after uh, exposing all that data, they're going to be extra careful, right? <laughs> well, the sneaky thing they did is they did it on what's called a sole source order meaning that the government or the IRS thinks that Equifax is the only entity that can actually pull this off, which is obviously complete bullshit. Um, yeah. But for whatever reason, they just wanted to push it through and push it through fast. Interesting. Yeah, it makes you wonder what the hell is going on. Yeah, yeah I'll, I wouldn't I'll, be too happy. A, a, a quick comment on that, that whole thing, the... the the damn hacks and the, the release of information, the, the privacy, whatever, really what it, what it presents is an unwillingness in the uh, payment processing industry to deploy technologies that are readily available. I think, right. I think that at the end of the day, that's what it is. Yeah. Yeah. I have to agree with that. Um, yeah. I don't think there's much we can do either to uh, change it. I think we're just along for the ride at this point. Well, you know, write to your write to your senator. I mean, they've got nothing better to do but receive some <laughs> interesting mail anyway. I I love writing to my MP over here. Um, the uh, the new guy doesn't seem to write back to anything. Um, no, don't so say. I want the I want the old guy back. He was super cool. Like he he humoured my uh, my insane suggestions and ranting emails pretty well. <laughs> Obviously, his secretary probably wrote them. But, yeah. You know, Anytime you know, I've done that, I got I've to done. see his uh, quick swish of fountain pen ink at the bottom, though. So I knew he'd at least had to spend half a second considering my uh, deranged email. <laughs> yeah, I always get the uh, the form letters back that, that barely even acknowledge what the, the topic yeah. of my letter was. You Mine know. are too weird. They don't really fit into what they've got prepared. <laughs> so he's got to write something new, otherwise, he'll look completely foolish. Yeah, I'd publish them if they replied with something like a form letter to some of the stuff I've asked. I'd be like, apparently this is the answer. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think I've ever written a senator, but I can't imagine they'd ever write back. I mean, I've gotten letters about shit, but it's always just a printed signature that's part of the letterhead or whatever. And 
I don't know. <laughs> well, I really think it, the, the, the stuff that they send out, like, like these days, really, we are in a responsive business environment. Like, you cannot, you can no longer operate a business without a responsive approach instead of, you know, the traditional textbook ways that are taught, you know, all across the country. And the thing about it is, is that nobody, if you were a dinosaur, you didn't know the meteor was about to come, did you? No, you were just (laughs) chewing on your plant and everything was, everything was lovely, you know, and then all of a sudden, boom. And that's the landscape we live in right now. As far as the economy goes, any Joe Schmo in a garage that has half a brain and an iron will can can rise up out of the muck and be that meteor that just blows up all the dinosaurs. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I agree. I, I, I I've moment. tried. Uh, I've tried for my business to to uh, automate a lot of communications, and at the end of the day, it just doesn't work that well. Um, you know, personalized responses and all that kind of stuff works much better for us. Yeah, I mean, yeah, and you see big you know, players still about, doing it. I mean, it's, it's relationship, like the old school relationships, uh, that's what's missing, but with the new school, new tech flavors. Right. Yeah. I mean, if you, I, can, if you can marry, if you can marry those two, yeah. you can marry the handshakes and the face to faces and the, you know, the, the thoughtful responses with the technology that is now at, at uh, that, that's basically the digital economy now. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah. You can really really do some damage and i'll just tell you this right now uh the the competitors in my space are uh on the titanic basically they're on the (laughs) titanic and they think it's indestructible and the architects thought it was indestructible um and that illusion allowed the captain to just sail right in to the sea and ignore that little iceberg yeah, you probably shouldn't uh, go around uh, naming uh, naming <laughs> ships the unsinkable. Um, you know, the old uh, the old captain yeah, you know, saying, at, well, at uh, this point, at, at this point now, like they couldn't stop me even if they tried, and I, I can assure you, they're trying with everything they have, everything yeah. they have. So, at the, it, you know, when, when the regulators show up, when 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 the men in suits show up, uh, it's it's game over. It's game over for them. Yeah. Well, we've read some they really just, interesting they, they articles. They just don't on, believe it yet. On the subject you're talking about in the, uh, I'm guessing the uh, drug treatment space. Are yeah. Allowed to talk about it at all, or uh... yeah, we'll, we'll get there. We got a big topic about it yeah. towards the end of the news. Okay. We'll, cool, we'll get cool. to it. I, I'm going oh, oh, yeah, 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 uh, yeah. to add a dollar. Yeah, yeah. I'm going to add a dollar to my appetite. Yeah. Yeah. Let's just run through the other uh, tedious news that's going around in the world, and uh, we'll have plenty of time to share stories about how fun that area is. Oh, I need blast. to quickly add a dollar to my uh, Vin Bar tab, though, before we move on. Um, while we're on the, the personalized responses, Gary Vaynerchuk still replies to all of his, <laughs> all of his tweets. All of the every show, every show, I'm adding a dollar to my Bar tab for you in Vegas, buddy. <laughs> you couldn't even last 15 minutes today, buddy. But I'll well, I didn't, know, I didn't know. Looking at the other topics, I didn't know where I was going to sneak him in. So I was like, well, this is, I've got to get him in now and get that dollar added on your Bar tab, man. So... Yeah, I think it'll be like three old fashions or something by the time we get there. Since you brought him up, I just, I, I'm going to talk to, talk about him because he's doing a uh, a talk at Wine Library, and the entrance uh, fee is you have to buy a case of five hundred dollar wine, which <laughs> is once again pretty smart marketing. But uh, yeah, anyway. yeah, like I have I, I had five copies of his book because I tried to go to one of his events, and it was like if you wanted the VIP entry and the uh, seats at the front. You had you didn't like pay extra to get in. You bought five copies of his book so he could get on the bestseller list at the New York Times. Um, unfortunately, the book was terrible. I made it like a third of the way through and gave the copies away. So yeah, don't buy his latest book. It's it's uh, the Ask Gary V book is uh, unless you like lots of silly stories about his views about parenting and random shit. Then yeah, by all means buy the book if that's the kind of crap you want to read. If you want a business book, I don't recommend. Sorry, right. Gary. <laughs> I like your Twitter strategy, though. I, I don't like the latest book. <laughs> He's working on a new one, though. Maybe that one will be good. Oh yeah. Moving on in the Facebook world, Russia is saying um, if Facebook, I guess it's Ru- Russian law that if you're collecting personal data from Russian citizens, you need to store it uh, at a data center on Russian soil, which Facebook is not doing. And apparently, and that's actually that's actually not a re- 
ridiculous request. Yeah, that's right. That's not quite not logical. And I haven't read the entire article fully. I would assume Facebook would likely comply with it at some point. It doesn't seem like Russia kind of, they quoted to say, in 2018, we'll, we will think about it, and maybe we will check if they're doing it. You know, it's so, it's probably just... Yeah, I mean, they're <laughs> going to have to comply with that stuff worldwide, because yeah. the new European data protection laws are really similar. Um, a lot of the stuff that Google and Facebook do now will be illegal um, when those come out. So, I think... So, just, is uh, that a taxation thing, where because that data is being stored on Russian soil or American soil versus having it all in Ireland. Is that the whole thing behind it or what? It, no, no, it's just to do with auditing it. Like, how do you audit their compliance with the uh, data protection layers if you can't audit what's on their server or seize it if you want to? Like, if you think Facebook's broken, um, you know, to use this example, Russian data protection law, how do you seize their servers and seize right. the data if it's not right. held in Russia? Like, the Americans aren't going to let them fly into... Texas or wherever their data center is and seize their servers, are they? It's not going to happen. So if you want to control your citizens' data, you have to um, have a way of enforcing it. Um, that makes sense. I'm sure there's other aspects. I'm sure there's a financial part to it as well. But Yeah, that makes sense. You, so. Yeah, that, make, that does make sense. Yeah. yeah. I, mean, I mean, there are separate taxation issues with all of these companies. I mean, Google has their licenses owned in some island somewhere, and they don't even right. repatriate the money to America. <laughs> yeah. So, I mean, there's not even America gets all of the tax from Google they would get if the uh, intellectual property was owned by an American corporation, not by one of their island subsidiaries. So there's, there's all kinds of stuff beyond the uh, data protection. But I think, I don't know, governments have a big problem with all these companies because they haven't really got a handle on what the hell to do with them at all. They just do whatever they want, and yeah, at the minute, no one does anything much. Yeah. Yeah, uh, in other news, um, everyone's noticed you've got a news site, whether it's the Wall Street Journal or New York Times or whoever. You're often paywalled if you're not paying for a subscription. Um, Steve, I'll let you uh, run this news about the first click three free dropping by Google. You're yeah, right. I mean, that's why we're supporting the uh, Las Vegas Sun, because uh, they don't have a paywall, so we can share the link and everyone can read it. Um, I mean, I think that's going to be one of our policies on the show. We're going to, unless we can't find a reputable source anywhere, um, we're not going to share any paywall links at all on the show. Um, but yeah, I mean, basically in the old days, Google was um, forcing people to... Hey, guys, guys I, don't mean to, I don't mean to cut you off, but I'm going to have to boogie for a second. Garrett, um... Uh, can I just uh, uh, buzz you on the thing and let you know when I can get back on? Yeah, just shoot me a message on Facebook. I'll give you a call back. Yeah, we'll hold off on the Dark Knight segment until, uh, until you're back. <laughs> <laughs> All right. That's All the right. best segment of the show, guys. Yep. You've got to no watch problem. right till the you got to watch right till Thanks. the end to get Wait. the Dark Knight segment, but it's gonna blow your mind. <laughs> so watch to the end. Smash that like button. If we don't have four thousand likes, he might not even come back. So it's gonna be just good. Saying. It's going to be good. Gonna be good. You know, we, haven't, we haven't had a guest who had a secret identity before, so this is all new for the show. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, I mean, so um, in the old days, they were if you found a New York Times article or something in the Google search results, you clicked through and you got to at least see the article that you clicked on. The publishers hated it because obviously you can clear your cookies, you can open another browser tab, you can grab your tablet up and read another article. Um, there was ways around it from Facebook redirect links as well, and it was just a big minefield for the publishers. Like it wasn't, they weren't really paywalling their content after one click. You were getting like 497 clicks a month for free. It just wasn't working for them. And Google has um, decided to work with them for whatever reason um, to remove that feature. Which I, you know, I mean, I think it's fine if publishers want to have their stuff behind a paywall. Um, and it wasn't working for them to do the one click free and Google thinks that some users will still want to see those search results and will click on them and will pay. That's, I, think that's, I think it's all fine to be honest. You know, to me it's interesting because from Google, Google's point of view, what do you think the bounce rates become and the quality of that result that was returned? Oh, I think they'll suffer in the search because yeah. they've got to to not give Google the one-click free. I think they will yeah. get less exposure, but 
I guess that's just kind of why I'm surprised they decided to. They must have had some pressure from somebody. I'm, I'm a little confused. I, I, think the one, I think the one that's just going really badly for them. Google was telling like sites like New York Times and Newsday that in order to be on Google, you have to give away free content. Yeah, or a certain amount. Of pretty, pretty much. Yeah. Wow. That's pretty crazy. <laughs> that's pretty crazy. Yeah. Yeah, well, so like, it, was just, it was it was a deal between them. They didn't um, impose it. I mean, these are big companies too. They they talk to each other, and that yeah. was agreed. This would it would be the best way. Like you would get, they would get the exposure in search, and they would get more subscribers. I'm assuming the reason the deal hasn't worked is because the New York Times was giving away, you know, millions of page views and not getting enough new subscribers from it. So, yeah. The, like you, like you said, there's a lot of ways around those paywalls, right? and to get your freebie views or freebie articles or what have you. you know, yeah, I mean, my way around is to support the sites like the uh, Las Vegas Sun, who don't have a paywall and a couple of uh, anyway. No, so, apologies, uh, New York Times, we're uh, uh, we're not we're not linking to your article about how your paywall is being restored. We're uh, linking to the Las Vegas Sun, so. Yeah, I read the the Wall Street Journal every day, and I get it delivered. And you know, it's a really relatively expensive newspaper. It's like forty bucks. Hashtag fake news. And I don't necessarily read it because I like all the news in it. It's just like, um, what do you call it? The uh, like the steps of starting off my day or whatever. I I forget what people call that, but getting that routine. That's what your, your morning uh, yeah. rituals. Yeah. yeah, getting that shit that just like. Flip through it. I don't even read half the articles, which is why I'm annoyed about paying forty bucks for it. But I just flip through it, and I see. I actually do like they do like a lot of lifestyle shit for the mega wealthy that you can aspire to. Like here's this cool house, and that's a few million bucks. Not like mega wealthy, just wealthy people. And, right. But um, what pisses me off about the whole paywall thing. And I think the New York Times does this too. For new subscribers, you can sign up for like the first four months or a dollar. And you get the print and the digital edition for a dollar for four months. And all you have to do is like, and I've, I'm guilty of doing this before, I'll just cancel my subscription and sign back up with a new email address. And uh, there we go. I got another four months for a dollar versus 160. Yeah. We used to do that at, at my old office. We'd get it. I, I used to work at a financial services office, and we would get the um, uh, the journal there. And we get pissed off because we would be locked into the old rate, and then all of a right. sudden we'd get like advertisements for yeah. you know one one dollar for the first year or what yeah. have you. And I think that's actually why we canceled our subscription because you know we were paying for all you know right. for all the new. You're uh, subsidizing new everybody rates. else. Exactly. Yeah, it's yeah. super annoying when ISPs do that as well. They're like, oh yeah, new subscribers, nineteen ninety nine a month for gigabit. Like, but yeah, you guys, you can keep paying us fifty for uh, yeah. forty. Yeah. yeah. And what, yeah, like, wait, wait, wait a minute. What are you? What are you doing? Do they ever send you? Did they? <laughs> did they send you the letters, Ben? Like, I get them in the mail, like the printed letters. I'm already a subscriber, but they'll send me new subscriber one dollar. It's yeah, like, yeah, that's that's how it, we find out. We would get yeah. the postcards in the mail to to it's sign like, up. I'm already subscribing to your piece of shit yeah. newspaper, and now you're just like rubbing my nose in your shit. But but the ISPs are smarter because they tag it to your household. So uh, you know, in a newspaper, you could do what you said. You know, have your spouse call up and, and sign up under you know yeah. their name, and then you can get that that deal with an ISP. But it's too, you know, it's tagged to your address, so there's no getting around that. If you're if you're already a customer, you're not getting any of those new deals. Yeah, well, you can phone up and uh, swear at them a bunch, and they sometimes back down. Mm -hmm. Do they? They, they ISPs have uh, what they call customer customer retention specialists. Oh, uh, okay, yep. And it's like then, with your it's like with your cell phone. If you tell them you're moving network, suddenly you get like. I remember when, uh, when I had my first business, my first business was uh, in the financial services space and um, it, it failed around the credit crunch because the network we were authorized through went out of business owing us uh, enough money to buy a house near enough. Um, and um, so I had a business phone that I was paying like 200 a month for because I had like four billion minutes to premium lines and all this crap that, you know, back then phones were more expensive anyway than now. If you wanted all the unlimited shit that they give away for like fifty bucks now, um, and I was like, I phoned them up and I was just like, yeah, I need to cancel this. My business is gone. Um, can't afford this anymore. I know I've got a year left on the contract, but you know, you can kind of whistle for it. I'll just default, and you, 
there's nothing I can do. I can't pay you 200 a month. I don't have a business anymore. I don't need like, I need like 10 minutes a month. And they were like, oh, don't worry about it. So what we'll do is we'll put you on 9.99 a month and give you a new phone. How about that? I was like, <laughs> okay, <laughs> yeah, yeah, let's do that. <laughs> I definitely don't mind that. Because your lifetime value is worth it. You know, it doesn't matter if, if you pay less for a few months or even a year. Yeah, I'm still, with them. I'm still with them now on a proper contract. So yeah, yeah. They, they've kept me for life, haven't they? So, um, but yeah, yeah. yeah. The, Working financial services is the pro tip there. Uh, yeah. <laughs> I, I actually had to talk to your attention. I switched ISPs about a month and a half ago. I had, I don't know, did we talk about this last week or something? I had, I had 200 up, 200 down from the cable company. Yeah, yeah. We spoke and it was about super it. unreliable. It was fast, but super unreliable. Every day it'd be down for like half an hour at a time. So I switched to fiber and I called them up to cancel. And I knew that there's nothing they could do to fix it. They, I just want to switch, and they put me on phone with this retention specialist, and I'm just like, I'm moving to Washington. You guys got service out there? I'm like, nope. Uh, I, so I, I knew it was coming. They were going to do whatever yeah. they could. But. That, that's that's what I say when I want to get out of gym contracts. You know, yeah. those are those are even worse. It's like the only way you can get out of them is by moving to like Alaska or the Antarctic or whatever. Yeah, I didn't uh, even know you could get actually, out of those at all. That was actually yeah, like we um, I had a friend who tried to get out of the gym contract a colleague at work um years and years ago and exact she tried all that stuff like our oh, moving town i can't get to this anymore you know i don't have a car anyway and you know it's like a six hours by bus even if i tried to come <laughs> and they're like well you know you got a two-year contract you know you're gonna have to stick it out i actually wrote to uh wrote to her, the mp and uh miraculously after a letter from him the uh, contract was cancelled so yeah 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 it's just write, to your, write to your senses, bother those, bother those fuckers. I'm getting better to the email as well. Yeah. yeah. We know, I guess. That's the way it all comes down to. I mean, his secretary did that. Like, she wrote, like, five lines or something, you know, and the contract was cancelled, so. Yeah. It's just a game. It's just a giant game. You could, all, you could also always charge back, or what do you call that, the, uh, the, the charge yeah. off on your credit card, and you can call your credit card and say... Well, they'll, they'll report you to Equifax for uh, non-payment. Right? <laughs> and then Equifax will lose the documents, so it works out <laughs> either way. Oh, even better, even better, yeah, yeah. Just uh, yeah. Make, sure, make sure which credit reference agency they're reporting to. Yeah. You know? It's like, well, no one's going to believe what's on that one anyway, you know? <laughs> yeah. Oh, anyways, um, Steve, you found something on Reddit, huh, about a guy on twin on Tinder offering some women for offering women money for local business reviews. Yeah, I thought that was pretty funny. Um, so yeah. we've spoken a bit before about reviews and how to get them properly, and um, obviously people buy reviews. And there was a really sad story, um, yeah, about a year ago that was on Inbound, where like a legit business was being spammed by their competitors, and they were buying tens of thousands of negative reviews um, to their Facebook business profile and stuff like that. And they were just getting destroyed. And like none of these people had ever visited. Um, so it was just kind of funny to see the complete opposite, just like a really crazy story where someone was just yeah. messaging these girls going, leave a review and I'll send you some PayPal or whatever. It's like, well, that, that, that reminds me of what we were talking about on one of our earlier episodes. Remember that, that fire festival when um, the guy like, had a phony festival in the Bahamas. Hmm. He was paying gorgeous models to go on Instagram and say, come to Fire Festival, come to Fire Festival. And it was billed as a uh, luxury festival for you know the rich kids. Um, so these kids are paying like 1,500 to like 15,000 a ticket. And they got there and it was basically, um, their lodging was, was FEMA tents. So uh, emergency tents, that, that's what was waiting there for them. So uh, I feel like I feel like we could run on a we could run a legitimate luxury festival for fifteen thousand dollars a ticket and still <laughs> make some money. Yeah. We don't even have to do a scam. So come along to the SEO on Mast uh, luxury festival. I think Garrett wanted to do something in Barbados, so we'll do it in Barbados. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, this the, the guy the main organizer. He was the owner of uh, this company called Magnazies or something like that. It's it's all he 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 hooked up the rapper and, and the rapper blew it up and the rapper got yeah. uh, he got all the models and uh, they weren't using like the ad hashtag on Instagram and it was a whole shit show. But uh, this reminds me of that, you know. Using so a comment comment of the thread is um, suggestion that this kind of SEO should be called pink hat SEO. 
<laughs> uh, which brings me, which segues nicely into the Las Vegas show again. We mention it every episode. In Las Vegas, we will be wearing pink cowboy hats for at least one of the live skits. Um, <laughs> as a throwback to our old, uh, before Vin's time, um, our old poker show, um, Donkey Talk, where we, uh, we well, they're actually red cowboy hats, but, you know, we're going to go with pink this time because SEO is more, well, because we're going to be talking about pink hat SEO in that, that segment. So. Um, Dara has promised to be... Uh, very, very uh, lubricated during most of the appearances. So uh, expect some really uh, good SEO tips. I, I wonder where he. Got, I wonder how. I wonder how or why he got banned. He must have been reported first. Um, the yeah, I bet it was something like. You know, he's not like soliciting women for prostitution, but they just can't yeah. have anything remotely. Close yeah, they can't them. have like really obvious money stuff going on on the platform because people. Yeah. Will, People will say, oh, yeah, well, it was just a code word, like, review my coffee shop, yeah. you know what I'm saying? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, meet me at Hotel 6 for a review of the business. <laughs> That's the hashtag for today's show. If you share this show today, it's hashtag review my coffee shop. Coffee shop. <laughs> uh, well, I'm sure that guy, he was uh, ingenious enough to think of that. He'll make money elsewhere. Without uh, the Tinder scan. I'm yeah. sure you'll find some other platforms that are prepared to ban him for prostitution. Yeah. <laughs> cool. Uh, next on the list, uh, I'm trying to figure out what's going on with this page here. Doesn't maybe if I refresh it. There we go. The social network doling out millions in ephemeral. What's that word? Ephemeral money. What's that word mean? It means um, it may not last so like um if you send a tweet you would say that's a thermal because it the attention it gets is temporary whereas uh, uh, a blog post that ranks in google might be more evergreen it's kind of the opposite of so evergreen, how does basically. this work with money like do you get the money well basically not? it's a, it's a blockchain based um, okay. social right. network so when you tw when you like do content that people upvote you get more and more of this um virtual currency but it's, it can be cashed out for real money and there are influencers making more money on it than they were on YouTube and stuff like that so it is working for some people um, there's obviously been things like this before though where you know yeah. like crowdsource money was attempted I can't remember what the name of it was I think it was epinions.com my brother used to write like um, comedy reviews instead of serious ones and he made quite a decent amount for each one just just nonsense yeah you know, i can only imagine what brian there. came up with yeah yeah they were awesome reviews i mean some of that stuff was gold um i mean he would regularly review the uh, length of skirts at restaurants he'd never been to and stuff like that you know just full on just nonsense and and that obviously didn't work out i mean at the moment it's kind of like you know blockchain is equal to free money doesn't have to exist you, you know, it has value. It has value. You know, people think these coins and stuff are worth money. So people are investing in these coins and it's allowing them to pay influencers and stuff. How long is that bubble going to last? Because obviously the first bubble ended with the dot-com boom ending and sites like ePinions and stuff went by the wayside. I don't even know if it still exists, but I know people don't make like the money like they used to on anything like that. And obviously, uh, what was it? Um, eHow, didn't that used to pay people quite a bit of money to manage the individual topics? Yeah, uh, yeah, you know all that stuff kind of went with the first dot com boom failing, and I kind of feel like we're in a kind of um, digital currency boom. Like I think they're going to have value, and there's going to be some big winners, but I think there's going to be a lot of nonsense that doesn't make it. It's not like when the dot com boom ended, the internet ended. The internet's bigger than it's ever been, but some pretty out there business ideas never really worked out. And the idea that you can pay for content with upvotes and stuff is kind of weird. I don't know if it's going to work out or not. We'll see, I guess. It's interesting. Am but I it is paying out real money. People are making real money from it. And, you know, there's people that are paper paper millionaires. Yeah. Wait, so so it's, kind of, it's kind of interesting. They just want you to, for participating in the social network, you're going to get units of their currency. Is, is that what it is? Yeah, I signed up to have a little look. I mean, it's it, it's the kind of stuff that you'd expect. You know, the stuff that does well on Reddit's doing well on there. Um, the stuff that's doing well on YouTube's doing well on there. It's kind of niche stuff. You know, there's gaming people, there's programming people, and yeah, 
it's just what you'd expect. It's the kind of content you'd expect to see doing well. So it's nothing. It's not witchcraft or any kind of weird stuff going on. It's just the same stuff you'd expect to see doing well. It's just there's money moving hands now. Now, now is is the money replacing like an upvoting and downvoting system? Like the when you when you, up, when you up when you upvote, they get money. Oh, so somebody else has to upvote, and then you that's how you get your. So how easy your is that to manipulate? Yeah, that's what I'm saying. You have to have, you have to have, well, you start off, when you sign up, you get, like, X amount of whatever this blockchain-based value is. So if you just kind of sat, signed up and, like, upvoted everything, um, then you'd be down to zero and you wouldn't have any influence. So you've got to well, kind of... Uh, I mean, influence. just write a bot. Like Reddit, that happens all the time on Reddit. Yeah. Oh, yeah, it's have the same problems as any of the other platforms, Yeah. yeah. I'm just thinking when you when you remove the uh, I guess like the social ranking, so to speak. Uh, what, what is it called? Up, upvoting and downvoting systems. When you remove that karma, it, what, what yeah, karma, karma or whatever it is. Yeah. When you remove the karma from from the social network and replace it with dollars, then you're not getting that organic right. social experience. That, well, well, you are. Well, you are. It, it's just instead of having karma on um, Hacker News, you have dollars. Well, you have whatever they call it. Um, I can't remember yeah, but, but don't you think people are more inclined to be honest when there's just no money involved, whether it's right. an upvote or a that's, downvote? That's what I'm. That's what I'm saying. Exactly. Well, I mean, I mean, yeah, you're more likely, I think, to. I don't know. It'd be interesting. I mean, I would be more likely to not. Because money something. always changes everything, even for the stupidest reasons. Yeah. You know? You're not gonna get the. You're not gonna. You know when when. Reddit, if I'm reading a subreddit, I generally see the post I want to see at the top of the page because it was uploaded to that. But if, and on a social network like this, you're not necessarily going to get, uh, you know, an organic... Um, you well, know, it is uploaded, but when it's uploaded, they get money. I got it. So interesting. It's, the, it's the same. I mean, the content, it's the same stuff. I mean, it's new and it's a much smaller, so there's a lot more kind of weird stuff where people are... You know, the, the the weirdos are often the first adopters, aren't they, you know? Right, right, right. Like the first adopters of the internet, you know, there were a lot of conspiracy theorists and alien sites. I mean, remember, um, like, um, Geocities, all the kind of alien expose sites and all the fun shit like that? <laughs> you, get a, you, you can click a web ring of, like, conspiracies for, like, seven hours and have a great time. I it's remember that. Cool. Oh, my God. Geocities and Angel Fire and <laughs> Tripod. Yeah. So, so there's a little bit of that in there because it's so new, but... I don't know, it's super interesting because it's um, unlike the kind of jokey one that we had on because we were SEOs, the search-based, you know, yeah, I'm going to buy 10,000 search credits for a dollar or something and that's going to make them a billion-dollar company somehow, but they'll figure that out later. <laughs> I mean, like, realistically, they're going to get, like, 24 cents a year from each user and they're going to have a 1,000 users. They're going to make, you know, 24 bucks or something like this. But, they, you know, like, but they had an ICO and stuff. I'm sure they'll do well. Um, this is kind of like social networks are pretty um, durable. So this is one that you can see if it rewards um, content creators better than ads. You can see it actually working. And there's, you can see in the old money world, you know, all the content creators are going on to, um, oh, what's the thing called where you like um, Patreon? All the real yeah. content creators are going on to Patreon yeah. because people are prepared to put money towards it. So all this is is a more you would have your you know fifty seven Steam it dollars whatever that I, I literally can't remember what they call them. I'm sure it's in the article, yeah, it's but Steam it's just Steam Steams Steam or whatever. It, yeah. yeah. So like you've got your fifty seven Steams and you're going to just give it to people on a click by click basis and really micro transactions. And I think that's actually something that the blockchain is super cool about because you. It's really hard to send someone four cents. Right, right, right. But, you know, like, this is super easy. You just click and... But they're four cents because, you know, they're, they're, these content creators, you know, if they're, ca they, they're cashing out half the money and keeping half and it's going up in value. So it's like a kind of... They get to play yeah. the uh, blockchain game as well with, it's with just, their it's, content the investment. Whether or not it's adopted is just going to come down to, you know, whether users think it's cool and if it's easily gamed, you know. So, if it, you know, if it's easily gamed and somebody's... Well, once the value of these um, coins becomes high enough, it's going to be harder and harder to game because right. 
right. you know, you're not really going to want to be giving someone seventeen dollars an upvote to game. You know, like the real top content has four thousand upvotes, and you're going to try and game yours up there. It's you're going to yeah. really have to want it to be up there to uh, spend that amount of money on you. Whereas, for sure, yeah. Whereas the real users, they've got their money through their upvotes that they've got. It came to them for free. They're sharing it around. It's like an economy. So it's it's different if you're gaming it from the outside. I don't know. It's kind of interesting. I think it's one that I think, I think this is one we'll come back to in maybe a year or something. I can see these guys being in the news yeah. a whole bunch of the next year, and I can see us talking about them again and seeing how they're doing. Sure. It's one of the few real ones I've seen, like where there's a purpose to the blockchain and the money. Like most of these. Um, ICOs that I've seen are just like, oh yeah, let's do search but have a blockchain. Oh yeah, let's do email but blockchain. Give us a billion dollars. Like, there's actually the money's part of the product. Mm. There's a reason to it. Like, there's no with these other things. It's like, well, why would why would search need a blockchain? What yeah, do you, what do you mean like, what the hell are you doing? I mean, I'm sure like they they would have an explanation because they've obviously written loads of waffle about it, but. It doesn't make any sense to me, whereas this, the money is integral to the product. It actually makes sense to have money involved, and it would be a super pain in the ass to have to put your credit card in every time you upvote. So blockchain is like, oh, yeah, that's super cool. You can upvote securely when money's involved without having to do anything. Right. right. Yeah, I'm on here now. It actually looks pretty cool. I, I was thinking more of a... Um like a social network, like Facebook or MySpace, but this is like literally- It's more like the Reddit, that's why like I said. Like Reddit, yeah. Reddit, exactly. And it has, uh, it has a dollar dollar value assigned to each thread with a pending payout. So uh, that's pretty cool. That's pretty cool. Yeah, it's interesting. Yeah. It's the most interesting blockchain thing I've seen, other, other than just Ethereum itself, which obviously changed the game from yeah. Bitcoin is just a currency or a value store. Ethereum was like a way to do business, which kind of changed the whole game and made these new things possible. So other than that kind of step shift from a currency to a business method, this is kind of the first interesting one I've seen taking advantage of it, I think. Other than people stealing money from each other, that's always pretty cool to read about. <laughs> yeah, think. I got to, uh, I, I haven't touched any kind of uh, crypto at all. So I'm really behind the ball here, but uh, I, I own I own zero Bitcoin too. So I just you know yeah I like investing in gold funds. Yeah, yeah. about a decade ago I bought uh, hundred dollars worth of Bitcoin, and it was about when a one coin was worth less than a cent. So the only reason uh, and the only I reason sold it probably on the show today is because he sold those. I sold it probably two weeks later because I was in I was in college and I'm like, I could really use a hundred dollars for beer tonight. So, so the reason Garrett doesn't have how much would that be worth? A hundred dollars, like probably a hundred million. Oh man, you're talking about like a few million. It was like so. right after it came out. Like I had just read about it. It was on Hacker News or something. Like the whole ideology behind it and all that shit. And I'm like, cool, oh, yeah, that's a future someday. And Hundred bucks, whatever. Two weeks later, I have some fun tonight for hundred bucks. <laughs> so here I am, working hard like the rest of us, man. Yeah. Anyways, Bill's not back yet, so I guess we can just go to the main topic tonight. Um, well, we had that link from a um, thing to do. Did I miss one? Oh yeah, yeah. let's do the Kinsta. Um, oh right, yeah. Where did that guy go? Uh, Gutenberg, the new WordPress editor, right? Yeah, so what's going on is WordPress 5.0 is coming out. So WordPress already has this new uh, visual editor slash, you know, you know, visual builder, whatever you want to call it. It's called Gutenberg. It's like a drag and drop HTML, CSS editor. Um, a lot of SEOs were, were used to using uh, Visual Composer or Thrive Content Builder. Um, Divi, and, I'm going to give a thumbs up to Divi. Yeah, for elegant it's all good. Um, but Gutenberg is, is going to be WordPress's internal visual builder. Um, what's notable about this is WordPress 5.0 is coming out, and they want to make Gutenberg the default um, editor. So that means no more standard WYSIWYG editor. 
It's just going to be this drag and drop visual composer, composer system. And on top of that, they also want to get rid of um, what they call meta boxes or the advanced custom fields in WordPress. So most of us SEOs rely on plugins and all different kinds of um, you know SEO plugins and feature plugins for WordPress. That and right. those rely on the meta boxes. So if you get rid of the meta boxes, you're getting rid of a lot of the functionality that you're used to with your uh, wow, SEO websites. So there's a big um, hoopla going on about this. Is there some sort of end game where WordPress is trying to push all the developers that have really capitalized over the last years? Well, I think it's it's there's a few things that are motivating this. One, there's a whole shit ton of visual composer composers out there that are, you know, I'm sure WordPress would would rather just do it as a uh, built-in feature. Right. But two, apparently WordPress had some kind of falling out with the company or the team that built the existing editor, Tiny MCE. Okay. Uh, so there was some kind of issue with them last year, and apparently that was the nail in the coffin for WordPress to kind of change change things around. Tiny MCE is open source, though, so I mean they wouldn't have had That's, to give it up. Right. But there was some kind of um, issue or a hack of Tiny that affected a, a whole bunch of WordPress users last oh, year. Okay. And that's that was the birth of Gutenberg. Um, so right now that there's WordPress is saying yes, everything is just in, in you know uh, beta testing right now. You don't have to worry just about reading it. The, just reading this quote here in the article is kind of interesting. The uh, tiny MC core editing engine is the powering the editable component that in turn right. powers most of the blocks. So but, it's still built on the same technology. It's just I guess that's the same way like Divi works. Divi is powered by the WordPress core and the editor. Right. It just builds on top of it, doesn't it? The, the head of the tiny MC team at WordPress is now taking over the Gutenberg project and they're building Gutenberg on top of the tiny MC framework. I always try and move away from WordPress, but I always get sucked back in just because of time reasons like you you right. need to just knock a few pages out quickly and get something yeah. up, and WordPress well, is just like, yeah, like a so couple easy. weeks ago when Zach and I were trying to move that site to grab CMS. I don't necessarily think it's a hard new thing to learn, but it's like when I only have like two hours a week to dedicate to it, Yeah, it's like how the fuck do you try to learn this whole new platform in two hours a week and actually get something done? And, and the support, here, the here support systems aren't as big either. You don't yeah. like you can go on the WordPress forums and get any yeah. answer you need instantaneously. So, you know, what, what scares me is right now they're just saying they're going to release plugins, uh, a new plugin to revert back to the old standard editor, and a new plugin to revert back to the meta boxes. So it sounds like this they're just creating these like huge workarounds yeah. that are definitely going to have bugs and all these kind yeah, of issues. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, I mean, WordPress is becoming a bit of a beast, and, and that's why I want to move away from it um, at some point, because uh, whenever you've got a big project like this, it introduces regressions by mistake and problems that are going to bite your ass later. Like you, I see WordPress as like a trade-off. You, you save 50 hours in year one of a new project, and it, it'll cost you 250 hours over the life of the project. But that instant gratification is so powerful because you're like, oh, yeah, there we go. I'm up. Yeah. I can start writing my first article now. And that, that's so powerful. And that's what WordPress has captured the market with, that instant gratification power. Um, but I do worry that um, we're going to – like we we had – I mean, like our, our Paladis website is on WordPress. And um, one of the plugins we'd used to build the homepage um, had a regression after a WordPress update. Our homepage took like 87 seconds to load until they fixed it. Things like that, you, it didn't affect us much because we, you know, we were a small agency at the time. We had five clients. We got like two leads a month off the website, and we didn't really need. Yeah. You know, it was all word of mouth, and I was just drifting around America meeting people. It didn't really matter. But if you were like a big business and you were doing 40,000 leads a month. And then your web page starts loading in 87 seconds for three weeks until a plugin gets fixed. Or you have to turn off a plugin that's essential for all the look and feel of your site until it's fixed. You might lose 30% of your leads, which might exactly. be worth you know, $3 million or something. You know, it's, It just strikes me that I'll, 
it's great, but I'll regret every time we use it in future at some point for some reason. I, I think the biggest the biggest group affected that will be affected by this are the guys that have these like you know portfolios of under you know even a portfolio of ten websites, five websites. To there's going to be countless, countless headaches and and, and uh, you know editing that's going to be happening if, if um, these changes take place. What, right. what it looks like, what it looks like to me is um, it looks like one of those like Wix sites or Squarespace or. Uh, well, I think they see them as legitimate competitors. I mean, people do consider should I do my site on Wix instead of WordPress because it's easier and I've got the drag and drop. I don't want to pay for Thrive Content Builder or whatever. I'm going to just use Wix and I yeah. can, you know, drag my picture of me dancing onto my dance education website or whatever. And not that I can dance. That was a terrible example, but, you know, whatever. That was the one I think I saw on a Wix ad most recently. It was some woman who did dance instruction or something and it showed her, like, building a site or whatever. Um, I think it was Wix anyway or Squarespace. Yeah. One of the names anyway. It's, they're all the same. They're all fantastic, of course, not. Um but like it, WordPress has to compete with that if they want to keep newbies jumping on, and a nice drag and droppy kind of thing is. I think in the end it'll be a good thing, um, and it'll push the people that make the premium ones to do even better. Like if the yeah. basic functionality is like, you know, Divi three point oh, then Divi four point oh is going to have to be amazing. Right. Yeah, I, 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 I don't like think Divi neglects certain things, like trying to customize the menu bar on Divi is a massive pain in the ass. Like you, but you have to, otherwise it's super obvious your site's built on Divi. I don't think WordPress is so dense as to you know alienate a large uh, portion of their user base by like just removing features for you know to make it easier, quote unquote. Well, they have like forty percent of the market. I mean, they're anything but dense. They've been hugely successful. Yeah, so. yeah. I, I think it's, that, uh, they don't keep I, it up. I just think it's going to be a headache, and the question is how big of a headache is it going to be when, when they change this over? Um, everything will work out, but you know, when you have twenty sites or however many sites, that's that's a lot of time they just spend uh, migrating to new systems. Yeah, I mean, I think some people, though, like you were saying, a lot of us are already using an alternative builder, so. Um, as long as you're using one that's updated and is going to work with WordPress 5, right. you're already in a different format anyway. So you just, you're not going to sort of be like, oh, yeah, I'm going to switch to Gutenberg now. You know, like you've bought a lifetime license to Divi or you've got your Thrive Themes uh, subscription or whatever. You're just going to keep yeah. plugging away like you have been. I mean, you might check Gutenberg out, but I'll guarantee you it won't be as good off, out of the box as any of the uh, existing premium builders. Uh, is, is Divi a builder? I thought the, I always thought Divi was a theme. Hey, it's or both. It, it's both. You can get the builder or the theme. Yeah, just yeah, you can just add. You can install it as a plugin and use it on any theme, or it's a theme by itself. Or you can design. I mean, you can design a pretty neat website on um, Divi. It's kind of like it's a bit like working with. Um, Bootstrap, like it's really similar in the design decisions they've made in terms of yeah. what blocks look like. So it's kind of like just building a Bootstrap theme or something. Cool. Um, I mean, it's it's kind of super fast. Um, I mean, I, I really like Divi. I mean, I think for our kind of next couple of projects that we've got to roll some stuff out really quickly, like the new Reach Creator website is going to be built on Divi just because we need it out. It's quick. We can get yeah. it to look the way we want. A lot of my clients use that, so you know I'm always in their back end posting content. Uh, it, it looks cool. I just thought it was a, a theme. I didn't realize that it was its own, uh, it, or it can be its own standalone builder. Yeah, yeah. The 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 builder is um, pretty cool. Um, I mean, I prefer to use it just as the whole theme, and then customize the theme, and then it's all integrated nicely. But you can just use it in any old site. Cool. Yeah, hey, check it out actually. What I've used it the most is like for a client that needs a really good link bait. You can install the Divi um, Builder plugin, and you can make a theme page that's just a blank page, uh -huh. like none of, none of the WordPress, none of their existing theme header or anything on. And then you right. can make a standard page link bait that's just completely built in Divi and looks completely different from their site, kind of like to still do on the uh, Simply yeah, Business yeah. website or standalone can, link baits. That you you can do that with Thrive also. They have. Uh, a feature they call Thrive Leads, and what it is is you just start with like basically a blank, a blank white screen, 
and you just build off of there. That's actually uh, how I build my home pages, you know, and then I hard code them back in. But uh, it's pretty cool. Yeah, Thrive is very good as well. You've reached the voice so yeah, I'd be surprised if, uh, with the step. Dark Knight. Oh, he didn't is answer. The Dark Knight back. <laughs> he told him to call, but he didn't answer. Oh. <laughs> The Dark Knight will be back soon, people. So yeah. um, get off of this. But yeah, I, I would. I'm going to bet that the uh, Gutenberg version one is nowhere near as good as Thrive, Divi, or existing premium builders. I don't think anyone that's using them is going to make the switch. Um, yeah, yeah. But it's going to be super handy for people who just want to put some pictures in columns and shit like that. That's a freaking pain in the ass in a WYSIWYG uh, editor. I, I, think I mean, WYSIWYG work. editors make no sense for. For editing content online on your website, a WYSIWYG editor makes absolutely no sense yeah. at all because you get, and here's the problem WordPress has, is it looks always looks like a blog because all you've got is a wall of text you can dump in. It's like editing right. on Medium or something. Like you you can't do anything. You can't make a homepage on, without a designer. Just being able to, I want to do my staff page quickly. When the designer worked with us, I had two members of staff. Just being able to slap some more columns in and have three people there. That's something that a proper editor is going to make possible for people, which is super cool. Yeah, we'll see. I just looked up the release date and I couldn't find anything. So hopefully it stays in bed for a while longer until they work out the kinks. So, yeah. yeah. Um, just while, if you guys are looking at different CMSs, ones that, um, so cross grab off your list, because that sounds like it was a bit of a pain in the ass when Garrett checked it out this week. Well, well this month, I should say. It's definitely, I think it'd be cool if I got it figured out, but I just didn't have enough time to look at it, but the thing is, it's definitely not as plug and, not even as close as plug and play as WordPress. You need to be able to understand some server stuff, and a lot of people don't, how to route stuff within your server. Like, you need to be able to SSH, SSH into your server and set some stuff up, which is probably a huge learning curve for most people. Yeah. Um, yeah. But I mean, have... how, that was actually what put me off it, despite all the positive reviews, and that's why I wanted you to have a look because um, I, I didn't know if I was just missing something. It was all this yeah. like, "Oh, you got to write this YAML thing, right?" You know, it, YAML kind of markup language. Whereas when I used Perch, which is the one I was kind of going to say people should check out, you just took a so you have a Bootstrap theme that your designer's done, and you want some editable fields on your homepage. You just paste them like a little fragment of PHP in each editable area, then you fire up your back end and perch and it's all there ready to edit in a WYSIWYG editor. Like there's no how about some of the older CMSs like Drupal and Joomla Joomla is, Joomla is an absolute joke and you should never look at it. Drupal yeah. is Drupal is Joomla after it drops some acid. <laughs> there, I have well, I had one site on Drupal terrible. years ago. And it was plug and play enough to get to get the site up within like a day or two, but it was just I never went back, and that that should tell you everything you need to know. Yeah, if you're a developer and someone wants their site in Drupal or Joomla, you should have a minimum price of around $150,000 or something. Yeah. Like if you were going to charge 10k in WordPress, times it by 15. It's <laughs> <laughs> They're not even sensible. I don't even know what the hell. And then, oh, and, and hire a security expert because it'll get hacked like seventeen times a month or something. It's, it's so, so why not just why not just do a hard coded HTML CSS website? At, you know, see, at that see, that's what Grav CMS is cool for. It's flat file. There's no database, but there's that learning curve of knowing how a server works and uh, a YMAL file is similar how to Ruby and Rails works. So I was familiar with it. But at the same time, it was like totally different. And going back to this whole shit of only having two hours a week to learn something new, it's like, well, yeah, five yeah. months from now, I'll have it figured out, and that does me no good. Yeah. Yeah. And the other one, so yeah, Perch is really, really good. It's about, um, it's British, I think, so it's 70 pounds for a license for a site. Um, you can get a developer license that are where you can have you know some number that you can have in development all the time and then when you give it to your client they just pay the 70 quid or obviously if you've charged them 10,000 for development you just pay the 70 quid for them and give it to them for life then and they get lifetime updates and everything for the 70 quid so it's it's a really cool project it's much better more developer friendly than WordPress 
I did a project in it with no experience using it, a paid project for a client. Um, the site's still up, it run. It's yeah. lightning fast, it really is. Compared with WordPress, it's unbelievable because I'm, I'm, I'll be the first to admit, I don't give a shit about optimizing for speed, I can't be bothered. <laughs> so this was just this was just raw bootstrap three with a whole load of huge fuck off images but perch out of the box automatically resizes images to boxes that you put them in it makes it impossible for you to be a oh. shit as well. the dark knight are you there i am here oh wonderful welcome back welcome yeah. back we're just uh, we've just covered all the other topics so we're about to get into your favorite yeah excellent give me one second to connect to bluetooth here sure uh, so tonight, our special guest, you know, there's been a lot of drama in the SEO world in the last few weeks about the drug and rehab, uh, the drug and alcohol rehab space uh, specifically. Um, Barry covered it today over at the round table, or actually a couple days ago. Google's dropping the hammer on AdWords as a start um, and um, as a bigger picture, as a sense. Basically, what's happening with a lot of these drug rehabs is they don't even exist and you're it's it's I don't want to say it's I kind of do want to say it's it's borderline human trafficking patients that really need help and it's just down to the highest bidder who's gonna pay the most for this lead and you'd be blown away by how much someone's recovery just, is worth. Um, quickly remind people of our conversation a couple of weeks ago where we covered the story where um, People on the local listings, people were finding unclaimed listings for real rehab centers and using the map editor to put their bullshit call center number on there until it got noticed and taken down. So this isn't the first, you know, the AdWords um, scammers right. aren't the first time Google's been, Google products have been targeted by this industry. There's, you know, they're fighting a really big battle against people with, a, with big budgets because, you know, three to 30 grand commissions per um, head on a bed in the industry. You know, there's a big incentive for people to do this kind of stuff. So there's been map editing where people have been stealing other people's phone numbers, putting in their number. Now there's there's AdWords fraudsters. Um, there's, there's been SEO fraudsters forever where they, you know, they have listings for real centers, but they make it really hard for you to find the actual real number you should ring and all the tricks in the book are employed to make you ring their number instead. There was a court case over that that we uh, we haven't covered on the show, but we spoke about previously on some blog posts on our old site. The industry is very, very um, interesting. Yeah, to say the least. So, the Dark Knight, you're uh, pretty heavily involved. What are what's your thoughts on everything that's going on? As somebody who is currently not just in the trenches, but basically like commanding the troops, um, <laughs> let's just say that the bullet fire is frequent, plenty, and if you if, if you don't have multiple bulletproof vests, you're gonna go down. <laughs> um, and I've already got like I've already got people. Uh, in fact, the sad thing is, guys, the sad thing is these are personal friends of mine that I've known for a long time, friends that I've raised money for when they were in intensive care units, um, friends that I invested money in and never asked anything in return, who have been calling professionals I intend to gauge and people I tend to employ and literally slandering my name to the woodshed. That is what is on the line, and that's just the beginning. I mean, I've talked to a guy who got run out of a certain area uh, that was affected by a certain um, uh, natural event recently, uh, uh, you know, uh, possibly uh, a state where the sun shines a lot. And, uh, <laughs> that happens to uh, be a pretty popular state for that stuff. Let me tell you something. What I'm is there a reason for that, by the way, to kind of fill in the uh, the overseas um, the overseas viewers oh, and God. people like myself? Like, why is Florida so popular as the destination to ship people to? All right. From wherever the hell uh, honestly, are. guys, honestly, like with all due respect, um, that's not even something I'm comfortable going into yet because of the uh, the dangers that speaking about it um, uh, can cause. But uh, 
It's understandable. Uh, it, it, it's something that, that right now, um, my number one priority after consulting with uh, both legal professionals and high level business professionals today is to meet with one of my attorneys and uh, get some paperwork done before I start uh, discussing anything in as vague a fashion as possible regarding that. Well, I guess, I guess to ask a fairer question then, um, for the viewers who, because we all get approached all the time by people in the industry, you know, if you're a, an SEO agency, if you're a marketer online, if you're a social media guy, you've been approached dozens of times by um, treatment centers, lead gen sites in the space. What can people do to protect themselves from dealing with um, unscrupulous operators? Like, how can people make sure that when they're doing marketing work, they're doing something legitimate that's helping people? What, what, what you steps know, can people you know, take? The, uh, really, the, the best step I can encourage them to do is precisely what I did, which is edu educate yourself on what is involved in ethically creating a digital ecosystem within a behavioral healthcare company. Uh, and I did that, and my results speak for themselves. I mean, I, I, could, I could direct you to a former employer of mine who, when I started there, uh, their ship was sinking. Uh, the campuses were in disrepair. The thing that they had going for them is they had an incredible program. They just, they just didn't know about the business side. I mean, they're getting mm. taken, to, taken to the woodshed. Uh, the big boys had million-dollar budgets. And it had the huge teams, and I had no budget. I was just a schmuck in a in a in a boiler room um, with a with a dream, and I made a website on GeoCities when I was in eighth grade. That that was my, those were my credentials. Um, and what I did we were is, just uh, we were I just started, waxing lyrical about GeoCities and remembering the old days. Oh God. Um, <laughs> It's definitely nostalgic looking back on it now. Oh, it is. It is. <laughs> but uh, so I, I, what I did is I started to read and research. Um, I was making $8 an hour, uh, working 20 hours a week on the weekends with no benefits part time, uh, about four months sober and uh, started to research. Um, took me about three or four months of researching to realize that nobody was giving away any kind of trade secrets. They were just using buzz terms like create great content and do outreach, build links. Okay, <laughs> how do I do that? How the hell do I do that? And I'm talking about the people everybody considers the best. It's like, what, what is this? Yep. You know, I read fluff and philosophy class. I know it when I see it. <laughs> so, you know, I, I continued to dig. I finally got connected with a guy who was just, oh my gosh, he was on the come up at the time. He was already considered an expert. And now he's just, I mean, he does whatever the heck he wants. He mentored me. Uh, it was the best, best in $500 investment uh, my organization ever made. Um, and it turned me into a digital ninja because when, when ethical people come and formulate a plan of action and somebody is willing to learn, willing to apply, willing to work, and the mentor appears, to pass that along, not only do you get somebody that becomes an expert in that process, but then they get to put their own flavors in it. They get to start doing some proprietary experimentation on their own. And so what I took a website that was getting two to 4,000 visits a month, 4,000 on a good month. Um, and uh, everybody doubted me, said I couldn't do it. There was no way it could be done. And my maximum budget monthly, uh, by the time I had completed, uh, was three thousand dollars a month, and we are currently uh, at one point one million visitors annually. And uh, nice. a top thirty, the last ranking was top thirty addiction blog in the world. So uh, all the haters out there, I literally fuel my gas tank with your <laughs> doubt in the morning. <laughs> and 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 you know what? The fuel is cheap right now and plenty. So I mean, to kind of um, to kind of summarize, I mean, so your kind of feeling is if you're um, someone who hasn't had experience in the industry and you're getting people approaching you to help with projects, really the the first step is understanding better the ethics of the industry before you dip your toe in because of the minefield. Um, you know, understanding 
Because I guess my question was around, you know, are there obvious signs when you're being approached by a scammer looking for you to help them market their scam? Um, but I guess the it goes problem is, uh, yeah, it goes way deeper than that. The problem is, is that all right? So I'll tell you, I'll share a little story. So I'm getting into the digital at my previous organization, and uh, uh, we're you know, we're looking to take things to the next level. So I start researching agencies in town and, uh, uh, I, I, you know, I vet, I mean, I'm a veter. Uh, I was, I was going to be an attorney. So I vet, I vet hard. And I finally come across the people that have won the best in business award every single year. I mean, they've, they've got just the most baller offices now. Uh, I'd love to plant my flag at the top of that roof, but that's another <laughs> story. Anyway, anyway, um, we engage their services and everything checks out. You know, they've got, they've got the analytics, they've got the references, they've got the, the, they've got the golden ticket from Willy Wonka. Um, and a couple months in, I'm like, could, you know, I'm, I'm looking at their work, looking at things, looking at link reports. I'm like, these guys, God, they really don't know shit. Mm. Like these guys truly don't know shit. Yep. I mean, I've done I, I've done more on my own in like three months than they've done with a whole organization in uh, whatever. So they got they got eliminated. Like, like nice knowing you, you know. Yep. Kitty games up the street, boys. Kitty games up the street. <laughs> Go play it. Go play it. Um, <laughs> and so, you know, the thing about it is, is that here's what happens when a when a behavioral healthcare organization is looking to engage third party agencies. They, these third party agencies show up in shiny stoops. They've got flashy analytics. They've got buzzwords that they throw out and man, you'll think that these guys were meditating with Gandhi. Um, and that's the ploy they're in as, uh, as one of my favorite actors would say lies the rub. Um, and the rub is this, the rub is you're going to engage their services. They're going to bill you monthly. They're going to sell you all kinds of pipe dreams. And then all of a sudden, look what happens. Google brings the band hammer down. Party's right. over boys. Party's over. Guess what? Let me give you a little, let me, let me serve up an entree here. More articles are coming boys. And you know what? You're talking to a guy right now who has nothing to lose. I got nothing. Nothing. I. I mean, shit. I, I've had two near death experiences. So bring it on, guys. Like, <laughs> like seriously. Like, no fears whatsoever. That's what no you need bad. there. So, so yeah, guys, don't up don't don't, a, don't, uh, don't take the call. Is the the tip I think we're going to go for? Like, you the, the tip sense is, you up. <laughs> yeah. The tip. The best tip I can say is train your employees in house or reach out to a guy like Garrett who knows all about this or, or men in this conversation and talk to them. Have a conversation. You know, with them. There's, I, there's so I, much I, smoke mirrors in this industry. Like, um, I mean, I can't say too much, but, um, we worked and you probably, you know, from speaking to Garrett, but we can't say on the air, we work with a fairly big player in the space, but the official line is that we never worked with them. And you have all these people in the space who've never heard of me and Garrett even though we were involved in a, in a pretty huge story in the space because of all the smoke and mirrors, the lies, um, you know, VC funded people who, you know, want to take credit for things they didn't really do. And it, it's such a complex web of um, stories and people. In this it is, because, you know, what fun. really grinds me up is there are people within these organizations that really, really want to help. And, you know, it's like they're a minority within the company that they work for. And you can tell yeah. when a consultant comes in, like me, you can just tell that 70% of the people yep. are just there because they know they're printing money. They're making 10 grand a week shoving these people in the truck. Oh, yeah. Oh, I mean, I've listened to sales. Like the salesperson. Is, yeah, it's, it's disgusting. It's, and, it's horrific. But then you talk to the people there in that organization that really care and I don't know if they just don't know any better about what's going on or they just have to face the truth that if this is how I want to help people, I have to put up with the shit that's going on. And it, it's really tough. It's like people well, how in the do you hide? The how do you hide? Go on. Sorry, go, on. I, go ahead. I, I apologize. No, I, was just saying, I mean, it's like the, really. The banking industry, like they want to help small businesses. So 
but the bank itself wants to make 17 trillion dollars or whatever number the bank of america and all these big banks make now there's a disconnect between your guy who's your local bank manager who wants to help your business grow and the bigger objective and that person the only way he can help you as a bank manager and as a lender officer is to work for the bank and these people are the same the only way they can help is to you know they can work for a small center and like you were talking about earlier dark knight um a lot of them are struggling like they're they're like they're playing the wrong game they're not getting any business or they can work at a bigger player and accept that yeah i there's going to be some shady marketing but i'm going to get more patients in front of me as the clinical director yeah and i'm going to have an opportunity to impact people's lives more and i have to accept that to get those people some people have done some bad stuff i don't think that's right but i think that's the moral the quandary that they're in yeah that's the quandary those professions yeah and then and, and and i spent i spent it took me 10 years to get a four-year degree so figure that out uh, <laughs> I, I, i'm just about that, there too i think it took me seven <laughs> <laughs> i know yeah garrett, you know i i, I, I wait garrett and i were going to start this business when he finished his uh when he finished his course and i think i had to wait like 19 years or something to start <laughs> when, when, when hey, it was hey, started, the, garrett, <laughs> The, the Van Wilder program is definitely for guys like us. Like yeah. I, I'm, I'm a big fan of it. But uh, uh, the thing, the thing about it is, is that during that time, I had a mentor, um, a uh, a doctor of philosophy, and I spent most of class in kind of a a old school classical uh, Socratic type uh, debate environment with him. And I he'd, he'd take a position, I'd just take the opposite, just because you know. Yeah. Just because it's fun sometimes. Yeah. And uh, a lot of ethical dilemmas uh, came out of conversations like that. And now being in the midst of one myself, um, I can just tell you this. Uh, the mentors I'm working with say one thing again and again and again, and that's move slow. Because when you're going up against a $40 billion house, and you're playing with peanuts at the poker table, the only way that you can win with that chip in a chair is to outmaneuver, outthink, and and, and basically employ responsive business strategies that adjust on the fly. Because let me tell you something, 40 billion industries, they don't sink overnight. Um, and when a, when a tidal wave like Google comes through with a decision like this, uh, People are scrambling, um, and they're willing to do whatever they need to do, including intimidate, threaten lives. I'm talking about threatening lives, right. the welfare of others, in order to uh, scare people away. The problem is, is that uh, I already lived that lifestyle in my early <laughs> 20s. So um, once again, kitty games up the road, boys. Like, yeah. you want to talk to somebody who's connected? Like, feel free to come at me. Like, like I'm right here. And, and that's not even being cocky. That's just real talk. Yeah, I mean, let's just quickly read the, uh, the Google statement to The Verge. Um, the, the Google told The Verge, we found the number of misleading experiences among rehabilitation treatment centers that led to our decision in consultation with experts to restrict ads in this category. As always, we constantly review our policies, blah, blah, blah. And the, uh, the Verge journalist notes that currently he doesn't see any ads for any of these keywords at all. Uh, these keywords were completely dark at the time of publishing. Drug detox, drug rehabilitation, drug treatment program, addiction help, addiction rehab, painkiller detox, and many others that he tried. So this wasn't a small, um, this wasn't like one of their small updates where, you know, Moscast is at like 80 degrees and, and this, in the organic world. Right, and, it's just a total you know, cut like a, a, Yeah, like they, they've made a big, big, big policy change in the space. Because yeah. of the let me, let me, Yeah, g congratulate Google for taking action. Like, thank you, Google, yeah. for, for taking action. Like, we thank know, Google I understand often, that actually, there's a lot of stuff yeah. that other people are yeah. for. But at the end of the day, the, their, their clients are their users. And if their users are being abused for financial gain, you can't be shocked when they decide to take action like this because the people yeah. that go to Google to look for help are their customers. And without their customers, there is no Google. And if people will stop trusting Google, 
it's hugely damaging. And it's like, you know, when everyone looked for open office back when, uh, you know, Microsoft first went to the subscription program and open office had their little brief uh, 15 minutes of fame and everyone was using it. All the ads that were running against open office were um, like um, spyware downloads. You got open office, but you got like 17 packs of spyware included in the uh, in the installer. And that damaged Google so much because people of a you know certain generation and of a certain level of experience, they didn't know you couldn't trust the ads. Right. right. You know, and I, I, it's totally understandable, like the Dark Knight saying, um, you can't expect Google to let that kind of thing happen again in, in such a high profile industry like health. Yeah, but yeah and Garrett, time, I think that. Uh, I, come to the conclusion I, I that think, they have to ban every keyword is also pretty intense. Well, we're talking about keywords with one click in the two hundred plus dollar range. You know, this is. <laughs> and I, think I've seen, I think I've seen them higher. I think I've seen them close to a thousand. Oh, there, yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Um, sure but the thing about it is, is I think that um, since we're all, <laughs> we're independent. I mean, I, I, I'm completely independent right now. Like I, I, I'm drawing a paycheck from, from an employer called nothing. Um, <laughs> so, so here's the thing is that I, I think, I, I don't think I'm alone here when I say if Google wants to talk, I've got friends at Google, like friends I went to high school with and we welcome a conversation. We're more than happy to discuss with them uh, things that can be done because I've sent email. I was sending emails in 2014. Uh, now I was just a little nothing in the, in, in nowhere and I still am. But, um, I can tell you this when I talked to one of the biggest movers and shakers in Florida and I dropped some information on my background, his response was, Oh, you're way ahead of me. <laughs> awesome. Yeah. Well, it's, so I mean, I mean, the thing it, about it, it is, tough, is it, it's tough for Google because they can't be on top of every industry. There's so many industries where scams are possible. You know, people on the inside are always going to have a step ahead. And I think, you know, it's good to see them engage and take some big decisions. I've seen it before in the financial services industry and like payday loans in the UK. Like there was the payday loans update. It was covered on obviously search engine land and all the big news sites. But what a lot of people don't know is the amount of personal interaction between the web spam team and the leading players in the industry. Like Google aren't this remote. They are if they don't care about you or they don't need you. But if they have a problem, they're not afraid to reach out. And I've got a lot of respect for Google for that because there's industries that have needed some big changes and they're not afraid to talk to people, I don't think. It's certainly not the impression I've had. The impression no, I've seen um, is, is a company that is prepared I, I, to talk. Yeah, I, I think Google is an ethical organization operating in a in a landscape that is the wild, wild west, and they're desperately trying to do the right thing. And I, I, I mean, what's what's a conversation going to hurt? Right. If we don't know uh, yeah, what we're talking exactly. about, walk away. You know, yeah. walk away. But maybe we do know precisely what we're talking about. Maybe we've worked with the players and we've seen the the bad guys just sweep in and basically. Uh, to quote a friend of mine who I met with in 2014, uh, I think he said about a particular center um, in a particular state that we may or may not have discussed, that <laughs> they'd be better off just taking their every, every other patient that checks in out around back and shooting them in the face. And that sounds extreme, but this guy was born in that ecosystem, that treatment. Well, this has come up twice there. on our show. I mean, when the uh, when the story came up a few weeks ago about the uh, local ranking hijacking, one of the numbers that was being hijacked on there, they were sleeping on dirty mattresses, like 30 of them in one room, and the insurance company was paying $60,000 a head for that. And on top of that, they were, they were having blood tests that they didn't need. They weren't being treated. Like one of the women fled. I remember in the article that we shared, um, Garrett can probably stick it in the comments when this goes live properly because it's in our. It was the one from episode. the Verge that Bill, or uh, the Dark Yeah, like they, 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 they. This woman had to, <laughs> woman had to yeah. flee to law enforcement to get out of this treatment center where she was being made to sleep like a dog on the floor. I mean, it's it's insane when there's 
that amount, like, are you trying to tell me you can't run an ethical business when it's that amount of money you've been given to you? Like, for sixty thousand dollars a month, you can't give the person a proper accommodation. It's, it's ridiculous. Like, there's no need to be treating people like animals when there's that amount of money available. It's yeah, just pure it, greed. it makes me wonder why are the insurance monies shelling out this much money for it? They have to. They have to be savvy, wouldn't you say? Do you remember in Godfather Oof. 2 when uh, Al Pacino <laughs> is meeting with the congressman and he says, yep. "Yes, yep. yes, congressman, yes, yes. we're all we're all we're all part of the same hypocrisy." Guess what? Everybody's got their their fingers. Everybody's got their toes in the water, and and when they put their toes in that water, they said, "This this is warm and nice. Let's just <laughs> jump right in." The, the you know, uh, and, and as usual, help us government bail us out. The usual, yeah. the usual line, you know, we, we, we didn't know what we were doing. Sorry. Our bad, you know, our bad. It's 40 billion a year. You don't want this to sink. So just hand us money from yeah. the people that we yeah. just took it from yeah. knowingly. Yeah. The thing as well is, you know, drug treatment in America, you've got to look at where the, where the addicts come from. Like why does America have so many addicts compared with the rest of the world? Because there's so much money made by these insurance companies, by the drugs companies in giving pharmaceutical grade heroin to people who don't really need it for pain killing purposes. Yeah. If, if the side effect for that as, as the health businesses, you have to pay a bit more to these drug treatment centers so you can pretend that things are being dealt with. Excuse me for just it's a minute, still, sorry. It's still plus EV, you're still making money. And that's the sad thing for me, it's like you, like, you know, like I, I was watching a kind of old show, um, Oh, what was it called now? It's a BBC America show, Copper. And like all the all the women were, were having like they would put a little bit of opium in their wine. <laughs> what I didn't realize was prescription painkillers that are that we take now, well I don't take any of them, but that people take now are I think forty seven times stronger than the, the, the opium that wow. yeah. Because the poppy wow. doesn't well, the poppy doesn't pop here, around here, an industrial here. grade. Here's the thing about that, because you're talking to the guy, the only guy I know who survived a car fentanyl overdose um, uh, without Narcan. And, and if you want to know how that's possible, uh, I don't have an answer for you. Um, yeah, and I've uh, been in, let's see, tomorrow is my one year anniversary of going into a coma in jail without medical care and surviving that. Uh, and January 29th, is going to be my one year anniversary of going into a coma uh, at a hospital after four days at a medically supervised detox center receiving treatment uh, under 24 hour care. So I'd like to think um, I, 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 I've learned some things from that, uh, both in my, my time, uh, at my previous health care organization that the, during the time that I, uh, unfortunately relapsed and now that i've come out the other side and somehow survived it uh i'm put i'm putting friends in the ground in the last 45 days four of mine have gone in the ground four people i've been intimately connected to are in the ground and here's the thing is that i'm not fucking around on this i am not fucking around on this when when my friends are going in the ground you ask yeah. anyone who's known me I'll go to war. I will go to absolute war, and I'm willing to put everything on the line, everything yeah, I, I got, all the I've resources. Had, I've had a lot of good friends uh, succumb to the the painkiller addiction, and it's not pretty at all. It's not pretty to it's, see. It's so sad because, like, um, living in Britain, where they're not prescribed that way. I mean, there are people who obviously become addicts here on them and stuff, but living in a totally different society where they're kind of giving them out like candy and then people can't afford to, I mean, especially the whole, um, oh, what's the one where they pretend that it was like a 12 hour drug and it really only lasted for eight hours. So people were having cravings after it. Um, oh, geez. Are you I talking about remember. Suboxone? Yes. Suboxone. Uh, yeah. Yeah. yeah, like so they um, advertised it. They advertised it incorrectly. It didn't perform as, as advertised. Oh, oh, uh, uh, you might be talking about oxycontin. Oxycontin, yeah, that's it. Yeah. Yeah. So like they were advertising it incorrectly. Doctors were being pressured to no, you prescribe this. They can have two doses every twenty-four hours or whatever. 
and that's all they can have. So of course they were desperate to have more because they were having massive withdrawal symptoms, they were feeling ill. Right. The whole industry was rigged against them and of course they became addicts after because it was cheaper to buy heroin. They couldn't get hold of OxyContin, but if they just sell a little hit of a, a little little hit of the real stuff. The whole industry is is horrific if you are and it's so sad that, you know, like then someone of his age can say so many of my friends have fallen victim to that. You know, I probably don't know anyone who's my age, older than these guys. I don't know anyone who's my age that's been prescribed that younger than me. Yeah, I, I've been I know, I know, I know people in their 50s that have got crippled backs that they're given opiates and stuff. Let, they can let me tell you something, because this happened about this happened about a month and a half ago. Um, uh, we have a we have a recovery get together down here. A friend uh, that I got close to a long time ago was there, reconnected with him, had a blast that night, saw him a couple nights later. Um, he overdosed and uh, was found unresponsive uh, the next day. And I went to the ICU to visit him. And you've never, ever in your life seen pain like a mother who is, who is stroking right. her son's hair on a ventilator and saying, it's okay, mommy's here. Yeah. yeah. And and if you don't if you don't break down when you see that, you're not a man. You're not a man. Yeah, that's Because yeah. yeah, here's the thing, is it the the yeah. the real anonymous people, the ones who are in the shadows who haven't had a voice, they're going to have a voice. You you better believe that. I'm going to see to it, and if I don't, I got all kinds of people who are in on this too. And they're going to see to it. So you can you can put down one of us. You can put down ten of us. I think a uh, hundred plus are going down a day. Guess what? Guess what? We're here to fight. Yeah. We're not going to. We're going to respect traditions. We're going to respect anonymity. We are fans. At least I am. I guess I don't speak for them all, but I know many who are fans of harm reduction, deregulation, um, of certain you know uh, schedules of narcotics yeah. um deploying harm reduction strategies across the spectrum we're talking right. about like you know sale and regulation safe injection sites this is all easy th this is all proven stuff the concept has been proven the problem is is that we have people who are unwilling to do it because they're worried about one thing money money <laughs> money yeah yeah i mean it's it's, How? Our, it's, our, it's insane like, it's absolutely insane. I mean, people shouldn't be given opiates routinely for mild pain. It's it, it yeah. um, absolutely insane. It, it's, this, is a, this is an ethical dilemma of the first order. I mean, I mean, I mean, to, about... I mean to go back to what we spoke about before on the show, like, we were kind of joking, but, you know, a lot of people get enormous pain relief from marijuana. And... And that's illegal, but opiates that are 47 times more powerful, and go back to the, uh, the opium wars of China, the, the British East India Company destroyed an, the, the Chinese empire's power with opium that was 47 times weaker than what's in these, these synthetic opiates that are in painkillers that are just routinely prescribed in America. That's terrifying. Yeah, um, Chinese the thing about it is, alas. history repeats itself, and nobody learns from it, and that's why it repeats itself. <laughs> yep. So, I, I guess uh, the President Trump, who I am coming out in full support of, has drawn attention to this. He said it's an epidemic. He said it's a crisis. And the problem is, nowadays, to get people to notice you, you have to speak the language of the Internet, which is vitriol, hate, um, trolling, and all that stuff. Um, to get them to the truth and reveal that, which is we have an epidemic of biblical proportions on our hands. More. Oh, of I mean the Philadelphia people. area is scary, oh, and it's it's, it's 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 wealthy kids from good with good parents, a good education. They went to good schools, and then they end up destroying their lives. Oh, and exactly. lit literally, literally, so like you were alluding to earlier, literally in so many cases, their parents having to, yeah, I their mean, parents we, having we, to die off in, It's so sad. In recovery, we say jail and everything in between. 
I mean, it really is. It really is because I graduated college and um, I take full responsibility for it. But the very next day, I reported for a one-month term in one of our country's finest resorts uh, and spent uh, holidays incarcerated. Um, had to defend myself from predators uh, and did that successfully. Um, but it, this is, it's just, it's so ugly right now. I mean, it's ugly times ugly. Uh, and uh, unfortunately, what, what advice, the interest. What advice have you got for parents who, um, you know, they have a, a, a child who's struggling with addiction? Um, they want to avoid the scams. They want to make sure they could get somewhere safe. What can they do in this market? As somebody who spent thousands of hours on the phones with families in crisis situations, um, the best advice I could give uh, would be to vet, 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 and vet. Uh, if you're spotting Google reviews and Facebook reviews on their pages, that are making some outlandish claims and you, and you find maybe just three or four of those, guess what? These places are yeah, definitely employing, those are usually the real ones and they're employing people to literally review, um, you know, good reviews that are, that they sound, you know, really fairy tale. They, Oh, I, I went here and Oh, it was terrific. And they, you know, I met with my therapist all the time and everybody was great. And, you know, I'm doing awesome now. And then you got the next one that says, like, I went here and it was like a trap house bungalow <laughs> right. in the middle of nowhere. And I met with my therapist like twice in 30 days. Uh, guess what? Uh, uh, the second one, the latter, is um, uh, probably the truth. Uh, vet, 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 vet. Do not make quick decisions in crisis situations, it's the biggest way to get burned. And I guess um, referrals, like speak to people, I guess, if you can. Call, find the actual number for the physical facility. If it says, if you click an ad or, or click a, a website or a listing that says, you know, um, let's say, uh, let's say United States Recovery Centers in such and such town and you call them up and you're all of a sudden you're talking to somebody and they're talking about 12 different places call the mom and pop local shops that have a number that goes to the home base and if the guy or yeah because there's, no need, girl, to go, there's only, no need to it, go out of state right i mean there's no reason why and there's no really there's, there's, there's no, no evidence that, that it's better to go there, out of state there, well, yeah, I mean, there are best practices. Every situation presents unique challenges. So if, if they're suggesting a one-size-fits-all approach, Ron, um, if they're not taking hours on the phone with you to plan strategy-wise, like, you know, they probably only care about one thing, the commission or bonus or whatever, the rip that they're about to make. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, so... You know, it's just, um, I mean, golly, I could go on for so many hours about this. It's so, I mean, it's Yeah, sad. yeah, I mean, it, to kind of summarize, to kind of summarize this with you as, I mean, if you're a marketer and you want to get into this space, you have a lot of work to do in terms of understanding the risks and understanding the damage to your life that you can make the bad cancer. This isn't like selling a bad credit card. Where there's you know these handcuffs and all the This is people can die. Uh, some of these centers are like treating people like dogs. And if you're um, you know a parent looking for help, you have to find you have to speak to someone at the actual center. And you have to really do a lot more research. Like you want to get them in quickly. Um, but that kind of psychological thing where you feel like you want to get treatment quickly can press you to making some snap decisions you don't want to make you want to take your time yeah, sure yeah you know you, you see somebody who's like you know about to have a car accident and they you know they, they usually jerk the wheel i mean this mm. this is no different um take your time uh come from a calm place and and try and bring a measure of, of 
tranquility is as loud as the storm is. Um, talk slowly. Listen. Uh, if your gut is telling you something's fishy, it probably is. Uh, the big boys, the big conglomerates, they care about one thing. I, I know it for a fact, was told it to my face by an employee, and this is the exact quote. We'd like these people to have a comfortable treatment experience so they come back. And that was from one of the most renowned organizations in the right. country. Well, that's that the biggest shock yeah. for me and the, in yeah, the industry we, uh, Garrett's agreeing. Like, it's the way they make their money visitors and it's like well you haven't got a working program then if, if like 40 percent of people come back and i, I mean, think the number was normal, higher than that it may have been it may have been yeah i mean is that normal in the industry uh, i mean is it just because treatment is so hard or is that because all right so so here's the thing all right let's 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 go into that a bit. um with the passage of obamacare uh and marketplace insurance um I have it, and I can tell you that there is no even like decent place in the United States that accepts uh, uh, those plans. Uh, they'll just, I, I, I made a uh, secret shopper call to a place, I gave my insurance information. Oh yeah, I'll call you back, uh, call you back here in just a little bit, no call back. Really? No call back. Yeah, because they're paying for calls, and when you're paying, when you're, all right, I'll go into another thing real quick, not to, not to pivot abruptly, but I was no, offered no, a I position. Cool. I was offered a position in uh, a few years back, and uh, this was going to be a, uh, a high-level position. The offer was uh, north of six figures, sure, and uh, uh, it was at a organization that was. Uh, just starting off, had just gotten venture funding, um, and as I dug in and dug in and dug in, when I finally heard, uh, I'm, I'm, I'm talking to the person, the uh, executive over the entire operation, and I say to him, I say, so, so what's your digital strategy here? I'm, I'm going to paraphrase, but what's your digital strategy here? Like, how, how are you guys going to, to bring in the inquiries? And uh, the response, and I'm going to do this on this verbatim, was, oh, I can just buy blocks of calls <laughs> anytime I want. 1,000, 1,500 blocks? No problem. Really? No problem. Like, I, know, I, know, like I, know who you're talk. I know I know which company you're talking about. Cause, oh, um, oh, no, no, no. Which oh, company? Yeah. All of them. All of them. No, no, but I know the, the particular VC-funded company you're talking about. Oh, okay. They were, oh, they yeah. were coming. They were coming onto the scene in um, PA. Yeah, um, that's uh, where yeah. the uh, NDA, as I've mentioned, fall into place. Oh, oh, yeah, NDA. Well, we never, we never worked, we never worked, we never worked with these guys, luckily. But yeah, I mean, um, I know who they were because they were coming into uh, PA um, around the time we were kind of fairly heavily involved in the industry and. Some of their practices and what they were up to was kind of interesting. So the least. <laughs> well, long story short, I, I I turned down the contract and went back to the job that was paying me half of it. Yeah. And the reason I did is because I have ethics, and the men and women uh, that I know and choose to put in my life uh, do too. And guess what, guys? I've been burned like bad these last couple months. I'm talking about like horrifically um, by people who've been very close to me that I thought had ethics. So really you find out a yeah. person's true colors in a, in a, in a dilemma like this, yeah, like where really does matters. your value stand? <clears throat> yeah. You, you talk yeah. a good game and I've seen you walk a good game, but when the fire comes, are you willing to walk through it? Yeah. Most people are. Are you going to run away scared? Well, guess what? I mean, this, this, like, this is fun for me, considering, <laughs> like, the places I've been. This, this, is, a, this is a layup. <laughs> I mean, it really is. Like, like, I'm not even being cocky about it. Like, you know, what I've survived to this point, you know, if I, go, if I went down the night, guys, like, I'd, I'd have a, I'd go down with a good conscience. Good. Yeah, so if I get, in, you know, the, the mysterious car wreck on the way home. <laughs> Yeah, uh, you know, it's, it's been a beautiful ride, boys, as Dewey Cox would say. Yeah, for sure. 
but anyway, I mean, I, I think that the players uh, like Google mainly that are involved are going to take action. Uh, I know that the government is taking action. Uh, I applaud both of those institutions for um, being willing to take steps to bring solutions to an absolute nightmare of a problem. Well, I remember we read um, an article in one of the uh, big news sites that I forget who it was now because it's a year or so ago, but they were, um, it was supposed to be like an outpatient type treatment program and they were claiming for like a hundred patients or something. And the journalist sat outside the place for three weeks and saw seven people going out the building during the day. I mean, the, there's yeah, insurance fraud, I mean, that, that, there's, oh, there's, there's wire fraud, there's insurance fraud, there's people trafficking, there's treating people like dogs, there's the whole, um, you know, drugs prescription industry in the first place where people are being given opiates that just have some minor pain and, you know, more holistic treatment methods would lead to better outcomes than getting them addicted to a substance that's 47 times more addictive than opium. It's insane. Well, I don't know how you guys. I don't know how you guys treat your dogs in Europe, but here in America, like uh, people Most treat their dogs better. better than this. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Well, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's true. Well, that's it's, 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 <laughs> it's, it's an old. It's an old. It's an old saying. It's no longer true. Yeah. Treated like a dog. <laughs> yeah. Uh, treated like a dog means you know being given a palace and the finest steaks in the fridge, while the uh, uh, while the me... owners while the owners eat the value mints from Walmart. <laughs> <laughs> Let me let me share a final story, and then I, I unfortunately I do have to go. Um, yeah, no worries. Uh, I went I went through some pretty pretty difficult detoxes, and the the one that preceded uh, uh, my current state of sobriety uh, was one week of cold turkey in my apartment with money and phone numbers at hand. Um, and by day three, I was hallucinating. By day four, I was also hallucinating. I got through it um, uh, alone. Uh, uh, about halfway through that, I showed up at the hospital. Um, I had insurance. Uh, they put me in the ER in room two and a half. It was literally room two and a half. It was between, it was in the hallway between room one and, or between room two and three. Jesus. And I was just on like, I was on like a, a gurney that was like, and two and a half was above the number actually. <laughs> Uh, I'm sure they're they're probably going to change it in the next couple of days, but that's what it was at the time. I've witnessed, and I'm sitting there, and they know I'm going through a brutal detox, and I'm trying to at least get, you know, maybe just a a fucking colonity, something that's going to lower my blood pressure, um, and they keep me in there for hours, and then they say, "Sir, we don't think you're detoxing. We think you're just having a mental breakdown." Would you like uh, to go to our psych ward? No, no. Like, that would make I, me I lose did, my mind right there. Yeah. If, I, if somebody said that to like, me, I would lose my mind. <laughs> yeah, but I yeah. mean, I, I walked out, Ooh. you know, I was certainly frustrated, but I continued and uh, yeah. in addition to the hallucinations, there was, there was no sleep. There was, uh, there was no food. I couldn't keep any food down and anything I drank, I'd throw up pretty instantly. So, uh -huh. um, uh, you know, the thing about it is they, they torture people by doing that. And once you've walked through that stuff, uh, there isn't much that's going to throw you off your keel. Uh -huh. So, yeah. uh, these healthcare organizations, hospitals with, with, uh, uh, seemingly good reputations they are complicit in it uh -oh. oh um and we're we're willing to throw that out the window when the next junkie walks through our doors which is frequent and often i believe it. i think that's the problem Pete, like society um has a less um caring view of people who are addicts uh, and it's not right or fair because it's something that society's created like you you can't say realistically that oh americans are genetically predisposed to becoming addicts more often than everyone else in the rest of the world you, you've got to be realistic and say there's a systematic problem here where addicts are being created you know young kids lives are being ruined 
because they yeah, injured there's, the, there's, they, you know they they injured their they injured their elbow at a softball game and now they're they're now they're addicted to opioids. It's insane. Yeah, there there's there's uh there's definitely debate around you know is it the is it the hen or the egg uh, that came first and uh, really does it at the end of the day does it matter like like we're putting people in the ground who yeah who uh, it, it, desperately it, it need it, help. It, it doesn't matter in and the, the short term because you've got to give the best help possible to the people in the situation. Yeah, and yeah. In the long term, of course, it matters because we, you, you can affect systematic change that means people aren't exposed to those drugs so easily in the first place. Yeah, and uh, uh, the good news is that I've got soldiers here on the ground who are starting the fight, and we don't give up. Uh, we're bulldogs. We're bulldogs who were born in the darkness, and these people just adopted it. Yeah. And so we're gonna bring we're gonna bring as much pain to them, with interest compounded, as they brought our people. And all the the beauty is, all we have to do is tell the truth. Sure. Yeah, right. All you have to do, all you have to do is tell the truth, because that's all the iceberg did when it sunk the Titanic. <laughs> Is it revealed the truth that it wasn't indestructible? Yep, absolutely. All right. Well, uh, we really do appreciate you uh, coming on the show tonight. Um, we'd love to have you on again in the near future if any other news develops. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I hear you've got some pretty big stuff coming up, which obviously uh, I, won't, I won't reveal tonight. But uh, once those... Uh, those big events have happened. I guess we'd love to kind of um, review the footage and uh, talk about it on the show. So, yeah, please do uh, keep in touch and you know, good luck on your recovery yourself and you and your friends. I hope. Yeah, a message know, to God any God organization. Willing, willing, no one else is going <laughs> to anytime soon. You know. You know, unfortunately, I wish that was true. It's not. Um, I just, I just. Uh, had a, a friend of mine who uh, who I got close with uh, uh, earlier this year and returned from a, a wedding, uh, his sister's wedding in Ireland, and unfortunately he's not with us anymore. And so I'm doing this for all my brothers and sisters who've fallen. My friends are doing this for all the people who haven't had a voice. And uh, we will respect the traditions. We are willing to discuss it with anyone uh, who is willing to bring ethics and compassion into this space. We will know if you're a wolf because we are one too. And as my hero says, storms come. <laughs> Good quote right there. We can only hope. All right, man. Thanks for having me on. Yeah. It's, been a, it's been enjoyable. Yeah, good. Yeah, thanks for joining great. us. And, uh, really good you have a good evening and we'll talk soon. Okay. Great. Thanks, guys. Yep. All, right. Take care. All right. So uh, that was very interesting. Um, there's so much stuff going on that oh, obviously it, hard to cover insane. in one show. Yeah, it's insane. I mean, you know, having worked in the industry, I know we've seen a lot of it from the outside, but it's so different hearing it from an addict and someone who's been through the right. the hell that the industry causes. It's so enlightening compared with just seeing the numbers or talking about the facts. Yeah, we, we, I, I see a lot of that shit here in New York. It's actually pretty, yeah. it's pretty common here in, in New York. Uh, you know, I, I went to a private school uh, for part of my education growing up, and it was even worse there in the private school than it was in the public school. Yeah, and uh, you know, there's, there's no really running away from it. Um, but you know, from a marketing standpoint. You shouldn't be making money off of uh, other people's misery. And, no, uh, never. Uh, it's if, just if, that simple. if your wealth comes from suffering, you, you, yeah. you're subhuman if you start doing that. Yeah. yeah. You know, there's so many. And like we joked about at the beginning, but the truth is, with the amount of money that's involved, there's no excuse for it because you can offer an amazing service for that amount of money. Yeah. yeah. And I don't, you can offer a first class experience you can send them to you know like like the betty ford clinic there back in the day the right. prices they used to charge were nothing compared to what they make for throwing someone on the mattress now 
Yeah, and I've said, said I've said it before. My, I've had a client that uh, hired me to basically rewrite an entire site of uh, a legitimate rehab, and he made one of those like you know placeholder companies. You know, you call us, we get the lead, and we forward it to somebody else. Right. And he was making like between like four and seven grand uh, a conversion, man. Yeah. And uh, you know, and he was being paid by the facility too. It wasn't like any right. reason or anything like uh, Bell was saying, but no, you know, it's insane when uh, the facility is billing out seventy grand a month to have this person there, and yeah. it really resonates with what Steve says. For seventy grand a month, what the fuck can't you afford to do? Right. I mean, you can give the you can give anybody the world, pretty much, unless you're like the Cook Brothers or whoever those. Yeah. You know, it's just like it's so much money. And you can still make fifty grand off it, no problem. Yeah, it's just insane. But uh, anyway, it's sad. It, it was yeah. a pretty cool, um, but sobering experience to hear the stories and stuff. And yeah. it's it's a different it's world tough. for me, being in England. But at the same time, having traveled to America so much, and especially the amount of time I spent in Pennsylvania, um, where I have family and seen what some of the kids, you know, young kids like. In, in good neighborhoods and good families, their lives destroyed, their friends dead. It's horrific. It's it's absolutely horrific. It is. Yeah. I know Garrett had some SEO stuff to say though. So. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah. I mean, the show we're we're, we're approaching the two-hour mark, like Finn just said. So I think uh, we do have a really good topic, but I think we should save it for next week. Um, okay. Sounds it's, good. It's really in depth about how there's obviously been a lot of turmoil in the last few months, even this short a date. That obviously Steve and I have done outreach for a lot of years, and we're not trying to brag about it, but we are very good at what we do. And there's been a lot of new players in the marketplace claiming to do a lot of weird stuff, and there's a lot of people trying to do their own stuff that follow these guys. And it can be extremely detrimental because, just like a little sneak peek, if you find a site that on their homepage, do you want to do a guest post? You really think like every everyone else and their brother hasn't uh, got a guest post on that site, and Google can't just automatically uh, scrape that with their algorithm and be like, "We got about yeah, two two thousand like outgoing links here that are all to these random domains, and each article only has one link." Isn't that couldn't be anything wrong with that, but <laughs> hey, it's gonna, that's gonna be good, right? But hey, they'll be the they'll be we, the powerful links that win in the long run, right? You know, I'm not saying there's right and <laughs> nope. wrong way to build links, but uh, there's little things you need to pick up on, and it's it's gonna be an in depth conversation about stuff that's cool. pretty important to being good and being better and being great, and being awesome at what you do. So we can look forward uh, to that. We can do our reviews and tweet this uh, today, right? We got time, right? Yeah. Well, yeah. Well, that only takes two minutes. So we'll, yeah. We'll rip on. So scrolling down here, um, I'm just going to review a beer. It's a little uh, Summit EPA. They're brewed here in uh, Minnesota, St. Paul. It's good stuff. I think Sierra Nevada has one of the best mass-produced EPAs, even on the craft scale, obviously, but. Someone said good second. I think for the Europeans, what does EPA stand for? Yeah, what is the... Uh, I know IPA. What's EPA? Extra pale ale. It's really uh, dryish, hoppy. IPA is still hoppy, but a little malty. Um, yeah, it's very... Uh, I guess dry is how I describe it. I don't know if any beer experts would, but... Very hoppy, very dry. Quite floral. Very bitter. Yeah, floral. But nice. I, I do like the EPAs and the IPAs, but EPAs are my go-to. Megan says I need to start drinking light beer. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways. Steve, you want to talk about Slack? Okay, uh, get a, get a Michelob Extra. Yeah. I, I have a <laughs> glass of water next, here with, next to my dinner here, too, so I, I'll trade that for the Michelob. Oh, definitely, definitely. Um, <laughs> yeah, so my, my review was just um, Zapier. Um, so 
Well, we've been using it for is like when someone does a transaction or something happens somewhere, or a form fill in, or you can get Slack notifications and like you can set them up in a couple of clicks on Zapier and you get those apps. It just connects straight with your other apps and you can get Slack notifications and the right team inbox and it just makes it easier to manage your workflow. So I think a lot of people um, are struggling around with like really manual processes for stuff where um, you know Zapier solves it and they have so many integrations now just automatically like whatever shopping cart you're using, whatever contact form thing you're using, whatever system you're using, whether it's Trello, Slack, whatever, it, they have the integrations already and it's a few seconds to get it set up. I mean, I just signed up for a trial, clicked around a bit, and now we get like various notifications on our trials and our new sales from our Facebook ads straight to Slack. A um, couple of times, though, it's kind of funny, though, because Garrett's always like, oh, yeah, this guy's ordering. And then, like, just two seconds later, like, this. so yeah. it's kind of funny when uh, it's like, no, you don't have to do that anymore, Garrett. It comes to your <laughs> But That's we'll awesome. train Garrett. To, we'll train Garrett to not put the manual message. Well, I demand immediate results. I'm the slave driver. Like, yeah, he's he's yeah. he told me he ordered it 45 seconds ago and hasn't come through. Oh, <laughs> as soon as I say it, yeah, there it is. Yeah. <laughs> so, um, so yeah, I mean, it's not as quick as Garrett, but if you can't afford Garrett. Zapier. <laughs> nice. Oh man. Yeah. So um, I told you guys, but Word Agents, where you know we're commissioning a development team to build a backend system for us to uh, to automate more of our business. Because um, right now the system we have is just uh, we're quite overwhelmed. So we need a lot more automations. Um, so in uh, my interview process with, with all these development teams, uh, I came across uh, these Bootstrap uh, administrator themes, and, and um, they're built. They're themes for um, custom CRMs, which is what I'm having built. And you know, I was talking to a lot of developers, and you know, they chart their quarterly, you know, prices of like thirty to seventy thousand dollars to build something like this from the ground up. Um, and we ended up going with an option that was a little bit less expensive. And we did that because uh, we we're able to use some of these bootstrap uh, themes that already have a lot of the reporting features and the automations that we want uh, already built into the theme. And they're like, just like any other like WordPress theme that's like 40 bucks, uh, you can get an admin theme from like 10 bucks. I'll post a link right here, like 10 bucks to 100 bucks. And you're going to use. Who's I think I'm looking at this angle one or the one that the, the best selling one from the in Spina, a responsive admin theme. Um, I mean, I, I really like creative them. Oh, you guys show there's so many of them. You guys show me. Oh, but, yeah, uh, it's like WordPress. It's like millions of them. I really yeah. like creative Tim stuff. It's uh, they're pretty cool. Those guys. Yeah, this could be common knowledge. You know, it was just new to me because. Oh, I don't think it. I don't think it is. I think a lot of people. Um, spend a fortune on stuff like reinventing the wheel like it's yeah i thought the cool thing for me was just the fact that all those kpis were in there like there's all these kinds of reporting functions it's already built in and it, it's literally saved me like thousands upon thousands of dollars uh, going this route so uh if anybody's building a, a custom crm i suggest uh using a bootstrap admin template to, Oh, yeah, I mean that's our that's our next step. I mean, our, the system I built, I literally just built it in Bootstrap. So, yeah, like it's it's not like a kind of really fancy theme at all. It's just out of the box Bootstrap with our kind of red color scheme. Right. Um, but I mean that yeah. worked pretty well. I mean Bootstrap and um, what's the Google one called? Um, you know, where everything's flat. Like it's kind of like uh, material design. Yeah. So like you can just you can just take those and build a, a perfectly functional system. Um, but yeah, we're we're gonna go like I'm doing the version 1.5 of our back end at the minute, and that's gonna stay on the same theme. But version two, once I've kind of all I'm doing is I'm adding the JavaScript kind of functionality to the existing theme, and then I'm gonna kind of do a complete move to the creative Tim templates, which are like what Vin's describing as the kind of 2.0. Should be yeah. like in the summer or something, but there's no need to be spending a fortune on doing anything from the ground up because in development, 
everything's been done before. So unless you have a really unique environment, like you're launching a rocket like fucking Elon Musk or something, why would you code that again? Yeah. Like, why would you, like Bootstrap has, um, you know, like a button that's loading and it's animated already for you and it, it's automatically not clickable. Why would you recode that from scratch and pay someone three hours work to do it at yeah. two hundred dollars an hour? Like, and, and, and you it's really who are just solving problems with tools that are available. And if someone can work with existing themes and get you something done, it's just saving you guys a fucking fortune. Yeah. I, I have a, I have a co colleague that we all know, and um, I asked his advice about what I should do in this situation. And he, he let me know that they they spent over well well over a million bucks to develop their custom CRM from the ground up, and they're they're making good money. They're probably making like ten to fifteen million dollars profit. But still, I mean, I, I'm well under right. six figures on, on my project, and um, and it's going to be fully functional. Yeah. So you know, for, for my situation, it's great, and I think it, probably for most people, if you don't need a lot of bells and whistles, if you don't need it so custom. Um, this is a great route to go. I mean, we should get your uh, developers on the call if they uh, if it goes well. Yeah, yeah, no, it's my, my buddy uh, Abby, but he, he's okay, an cool. idiot. So, uh, do you, do you know him? Did I introduce him? Uh, maybe uh, he's, been, so. he's been in the the YouTube chat a couple times. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, he's a yeah. wise ass, but yeah, he's he'll fun. Come on one of these days. Yeah, he's cool. Yeah, he runs a good amount. show. he yeah. runs a very successful. Um, Development business out of India. He's got a lot of guys underneath him. He's a real smart guy. Nice. Cool. All right. Yeah. So where are we at here? Okay. So uh, we'll just skip over the donation. Um, don't tweet this. I guess this week. I just kind of forgot. Someone go. Uh, Vin, go really quick. I just. <laughs> All right. My don't. This. My don't tweet this is. Uh, you know, social. What did I write to you? I wrote that social proof is very powerful. Um, if you're a salesperson, if you're an affiliate, uh, and you're having trouble converting, if you're able to get some legitimate social proof about your service or whatever you're promoting, and you can get a, a, an, an emotional review or feedback and you can share that with your audience, you're going to convert a lot better than, than otherwise. Um, and it's something that I've always done when promoting word agents. I always have my buddies back me up with, with real deal uh, proof uh, of their success with, with my company, and um, I've, I've never really failed by introducing social proof into a sales process or, you know, an affiliate funnel. Um, and it, it always it always uh, converts way better than otherwise. So watch with this. It makes a huge it makes a huge difference. Absolutely. Yeah. I mean, and the thing as well is people can verify the proof like they. If, if it's a LinkedIn testimonial or if it's a forum testimonial or if it's someone giving you a shout out in a group, they know exactly who the person is. It's not like you've got some random stock photo and it's like Bill Geiger from so-and-so or whatever. Like they, it's a real person they can actually speak to and engage with as well if they wanted to. And it, it speaks so much more to your business if you attract that kind of stuff. But I, I think it's, it's important to make the... Um differentiation between what the, all those scammer influencers are doing and just paying that, That's what I was trying to do, yeah. Right, yeah. So, so you want to have real deal feedback and, and that's able to share with, it, with your target market. Um, you don't want to try to hold the wool over their eyes by, by trying to do some fake or hate or review. No, I mean, there's an element like of, um, you know, fake it till you make it that works. Like... Um, but there's a limit, and people go past the limit, and it damages their brand. Yeah, like yeah, if exactly. you, like like you know, when you started Word Agents, um, I'm sure you had a nice website then. Obviously, you had your redesign last year. I'm sure your first website was decent, and you looked yeah. like a big company than you were. Actually, when when we started, I was just form form only. I didn't even have a website. It was just for stuff, but. Yeah, we went through a few. It's fully legit on the not taking it ever till. Don't even bother having a website. Like when you're yeah. small, just be small. <laughs> now we've gone through a few iterations of the websites, but actually, just with this new iteration, it's the first time I've added my testimonial page. And uh, you know, I'm only posting real testimonials, real reviews, and real clients. And um, before they get on there, they agree to be contacted by anybody that has questions. So. 
you know, that, that's the key. To just make it honest and make it real, and, and you'll see a lot more provisions than otherwise. All right, so I remember what I was going to say. So, you know, I, I feel like I'm coming down on people a lot in this show about being leaders and not just followers, but in these Facebook groups, <laughs> I have noticed it's a lot of the same people, like someone will make a post and go into the group, and then they'll be say, comment this word here if you want to know my latest and newest secret. And it's always the same guy as running down the list. Yep, yep, I'm in, I'm in, I'm in, I'm in, I'm in. And it's like, if you guys want to be successful, isn't the whole dream of being an internet marketer to make millions or whatever? Yeah. You know, we realize we probably aren't going to be making a million dollars a year every year. Whatever. Like personal income, not just business, obviously. But if I, a lot of these guys, I think you need to like sit down and ask yourself, do I want to be the guy that works my ass off and makes 30 to 50 grand a year? But I'm always copying whatever the newest guru is saying. Or can I be kind of like that and make the next jump to like maybe I'll make fifty to ninety thousand? I'm kind of implementing my own stuff. Or can I just be able to be honest with myself and say, okay, I'm gonna take this from this guy, take this from this guy. I'm gonna walk around the group and do this my own way, and here I am making two hundred grand all of a sudden. And like you're always chasing the carrot. Like if you're not planning ahead, I don't know. I just see it so often that no one's doing anything original, especially these gurus we all know don't do shit. It's just always right. old stuff that's already burnt out. Are you talking about that e book guy that was giving away a book or something like that? Is that the uh, I don't know. Is that the one I tagged you in? Because they started deleting comments uh, after I, I responded. I tagged you in that one, and like I don't know if you saw it right away when I tagged you, but they deleted a bunch of the comments after I responded. And then it just makes me look like a fucking asshole and an idiot. Yeah. <laughs> and I'm like, well, I'm going to leave my comments there, but you guys could at least have the balls to admit what you just yeah. said to me to make me angry. I, I think this targets, this is really for aspiring digital marketers who are just getting started or have a little bit of success but are still growing. You know, at some point you have to ignore the gurus and you have to ignore the common knowledge and you have to do your own testing, you have to do your, your own experiment, experiments, case studies, what have you, and, and build your own business. And that, that's what it's all about. If you're just following the pack, and, and I guess this goes for anything in life, if you're just following yeah. the pack, eventually you're just part of the mix and you're not going to stand out at all. Yeah, I mean, it's like people think it's uh, there's this some magic solution to uh, getting rich, and there is for some people. Like if if you're um, Ty Lopez and you <laughs> do a fantastic, yeah, but he did. I mean, he, he yeah. did an ad which he could spend a million dollars on on YouTube and make money more than he spent on it. And it's a parody, it's a meme now, but it's what made him. Like yeah. he figured out the psychology of what he was doing. Um, and that's actually my don't tweet this. Like you guys kind of tease me a little bit for the amount of stuff I watch from people that are people I would never follow or give any money to. Right. But I follow their webinars, I watch their shows, and my don't tweet this is really just there's a psychology in sales, and you, you can learn some of it from a book. I mean, a great book I read is um, Made to Stick. Um, fantastic book. I mean, the psychology of why certain ideas become. Um, viral and how you can not viral, viral is the wrong word because it didn't exist back when some of these concepts are spoken about but it's just little things like if you're doing a public health announcement how you can explain it to people so they give a shit and like they discovered in certain countries in the world if you show people's like rotting hearts it didn't have any effect on smoking. Like they would look at their packet with the rotting heart and they're like, well, no one can see that. That's on the inside. But you showed the rotting teeth on the packets and it, it knocked smoking down 20%, 30% in those countries. So people are like, oh my God, but if my teeth look like that, I'd be so embarrassed. You know, and, it, and it's just, it's all about that kind of theory. It's about the psychology of that. And when you watch something like um, Ty, Lopez, Ty Lopez's I'm in the Garage video, you're not watching it because you're trying to learn some fucking thing from him. Like, he's not going to teach you anything and he's 47. You just want to be like fucking, him. You, you know, it's not that you want to be like him. You want to learn the the psychology and why that was such a powerful YouTube video. Why why can he pre-roll that on any old fucking shit he wants? Do, mo do you think most think people money? think like that? No, I don't. they don't, but that's why I don't yeah. tweet this. Oh, I don't tweet right. this. It's, 
Okay. Watch yeah. these guys, and um, and um, don't like don't watch Gary Vaynerchuk and like try and become Gary Vaynerchuk. Like you're not going to start the fastest growing ad agency in the history of the fucking world. You're not going to become the next like fucking social guru and VC fucking genius. You're not going to predict the next five social networks that are going to be successful just by having a snip on them. Don't watch him for that shit. Watch him for why is he successful? Why is this shit resonating with people? Watch it properly as a fucking yeah. salesperson and a marketer. Take a fucking step back and think, what can I learn from what this cunt's doing? Not that he's a cunt, maybe, I don't know, maybe he is a cunt. Who the fuck knows? Uh, I mean, or maybe Ty Lopez isn't even a cunt. I mean, we all hate him in the marketing world because he's, like, so cheeseball. But I watched one of his videos where he um, debated some random hater, and he's so much better at talking and debating than this fucker. He just made this guy look like a complete Mongol. Yeah. Like this guy was, like, harassing him on Twitter, and he's like, all right, get on a video call with me now, and I'll debate you live and in front of all of your fans. All of your followers can get on the call and like they can comment and I'll answer that. He's like, I'll answer their comments too. Like, get all of your fans on and let's fucking debate. And he's so smooth and slick at talking. And it's like to pretend that you can't learn something from someone just because you don't like what they do. You're not going to be a social media influence unless you have a personality that makes that work for you. But you can learn so much from the psychology of what these people are doing to be successful. And why does that work? Why does that campaign work? I mean, do you think the, the the great ad men of the past didn't watch ads from people they hated? I mean, is that scene on um, Mad Men when they're looking lemon. at the Volkswagen, the, yeah. the lemon? Yeah, they hate the ad. And uh, Don Don says, "Well, we're talking about it now, when we yeah. should be doing this." I, learn I, from I, things. Learn from what people are doing properly. Don't let your bullshit prejudices get in the way. I watch hours of bullshit from people that everyone hates but you know what they they do some really clever stuff like i read uh, russell brunson's book expert secrets and one of the, he actually admits in the book oh yeah you don't actually need to be an expert to take these people's money yeah <laughs> he's straight up honest about it he's like oh yeah you don't need to know fucking anything is these people are so dumb they don't know anything. i mean he, he words it much more politely than this but this is the TLDR. These people are so fucking dumb. If you've taken any time to learn anything, you can teach them something. And they'll pay you to teach them it. So just fucking take their money and teach them it. Inner circle, man. And I don't agree. I don't agree with that. Where do I send my check for 15000 No, I, 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 it's 20, I, I, no, it's twenty five for the inner circle, buddy. The, the, the 15000 is for one day to go and see him. <laughs> the point of there is that there's philosophies and concepts in any business that you can apply elsewhere. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And, and you don't you don't need to compete with with uh, the company that you're taking the concept or the philosophy from. Like, and I think that's where most people that want to start their own small business get stuck. They're like, "Well, I can't do that because this company is already doing this and they're already dominating." Well, take that philosophy and take that concept and apply it to your interests or your industry or your needs. Yeah, like what are all these people good at? What are all these people good at is storytelling. Like they. They tell the stories of when they failed. They tell the stories of when they struggled. So, like, you don't want to become, like, I don't want to become, and Garrett doesn't want to become, like, an influencer that rips people off on some bullshit courses. What we want to do is make products that people really love buying and they love the result. But our biggest challenge is we need more people to try us out on a tiny order of five links. Yeah. Once people try us out, they renew at, like, 80%. Like, 80% of the people that use us order forever. Right. If by telling better stories about our history and what we've been through and how we learn these tricks, we can get more people to try us out, that's super powerful for us. And if, if we didn't watch these people that are doing this stuff, like if you can sell tr a bag of garbage for $15,000 using those strategies and you know you have a really good product, you can learn from the strategies that people are using to sell garbage, to sell something that's actually really valuable. And I think people are like, they're too quick to write off, um, you know, someone like Russell, who Russell started his life off as, uh, I mean, in my opinion, a scammer. He's still like, he sold, 
again, Garrett thinks he still is. <laughs> but he made ClickFunnels, which is a great product in the end. Um, it's a good way to take unsuspecting people's money. Being a scammer, definitely, yeah. yeah. Hey, I felt, I felt and for... You can learn from the, people like that. And they're the fans. I know I you felt, I fell for a lot of those guru gimmicks when I first started too, but that's what got me into the industry, and that's why I'm working yeah. from home right now and making a pretty okay living. Uh, but I think at some point you need to make the jump from following the path or following a set guideline and, and trying something. Well, new that, that, that was yeah. I mean, that was my point: is you're not learning the tactics from them. Um, you know, even if they pretend to be a practitioner like Gary Vaynerchuk, he's like, oh yeah, I'm a, I'm a practitioner, you know, I, I do my Twitter, like I tweeted some Fortune 500 CEO about the Jets game, and he gave me $5 million worth of business. It only works if you're Gary Vaynerchuk, I and mean, it's fine. He is a practitioner, he does use the platforms he says he's teaching about. I'm not going to call him out on everything, but from you and I's perspective, if we just start doing that and tweeting Fortune 500 CEOs with our fucking football opinions, they're not going to reply. Right. Think about it, who the fuck is this weird English guy going on about how he hates the Jets? <laughs> you know, it's like, I mean, and you know, fuck the Jets, but... <laughs> yeah, exactly. Honest, fuck, the Jets. fuck the Jets. That's I the mean, smartest thing I've ever said. Give me a fucking break. <laughs> Not even a proper team. They don't even win any games. They just like go out there and lose every fucking game. Bunch of twats. <laughs> but no one cares about that. One. Like if I tweet that to a bunch of fucking Giants fans that are CEOs, they might think it's funny, but they're not going to reply to me. You know, you can't you can't take these people's what they actually do at face value. But you can learn a lot from the psychology of what they're trying to do. Scale it back. Apply it to your problem. How can I make this work for me? And I've been doing it a lot on LinkedIn. Uh, we spoke about the last couple of shows, just mocking the big LinkedIn influencers. It's been hugely fucking successful. But I've adapted it to my personality, my style. Like no one can, no one who knows me, no one who's ever going to talk to me is going to believe that I'm going to be like doing proper LinkedIn marketing and I'm going to like put the link in the description for real and all that bullshit because it works. But when I just take the piss out of it and my posts are about fucking mongooses. <laughs> it's just jiving of the people that are going to talk to me because that's yeah. what they're going to have to deal with when they speak to me. So you have to understand what they're doing, why it's working, and then apply it to who you are and what you're trying to achieve. And that's what Vin was saying. It's not You're not being a follower just because you watch these guys' free videos. Don't give them any fucking money, though. Jesus Christ. Yeah. Well, don't, go, uh, don't go we, fucking retard on this here, dude. The, 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 don't, give them, don't give them money. Like, just look at what when you get to the point when you're like, get it, you've got your credit card out and you're about to give them fucking money. Put your fucking credit card down and think, what did they do to make me this fucking stupid? And learn something from it. <laughs> <laughs> oh my but, God. but for the Euro Agency launch party in Las Vegas, definitely buy your ticket. Because um, <laughs> we're gonna make no, no, no. But we are gonna make zero dollars on it. Like yeah. all of the money is gonna go in that bar tab. So when you buy your ticket, oh, uh, we're doing. You, you didn't tell me this. Are we doing this or what? Oh, we are totally doing. Your uh, uh, you guys actually want to do already, it I've already, in I've November? Already, I've already. Or do you want? Can we wait? This is gonna be like a hell of a four days. That I'm no, 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 no. We're doing it in November because I've already invited people to come. Who are well, you told me. You told me we were gonna wait. All right. Well, okay. Uh, I have to I, spend I, like my entire day tomorrow replanning this. I definitely <laughs> not say we were gonna wait. I said I was inviting people already. If you okay. buy a ticket, all right, all right, all right. Yeah. Okay, we're doing right. it. Um, let's let's wrap this up. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. All right. Well, thanks everybody for watching. Um, next week, I promise we're gonna we're gonna cover the whole guest posting thing. I know it. I don't always mean to come down on hard on people, but you, there's some really big nuances that people miss out on and it's really important that you pick these up and I'm not saying that I'm the best link builder in the world even though I think I me and Steve are up there for sure he's number two on them. Yeah. there are going to be some big tips about we just see so many people throwing away money where it's just really silly and it's always about how easy can I do this and if you just spent an extra five minutes doing some really easy tricks that they're not even tricks it's just the proper way to do it 
and Steve has already outlined this on his huge guide on Builder Society, step-by-step -step everything we do. We're going to have that next week. It's going to be a good SEO-related topic, so it'll be good. Thanks again for tuning in. Don't forget to smash that like button like Sassy Steve would like you to Motherfucker, do. Motherfucker, smash it. <laughs> Subscribe, right, tell your friends, even maybe have your mom watch. I don't know, whatever. We'll be here next well, if your week. Mom wants to be a, if your mom wants to be a millionaire in three weeks' time, she's to learn the three tricks. Cash money master. Poor. If you want to have a laugh. See you next week, 7 p.m. Eastern. I'm going I'm to turn, <laughs> turn this off. Okay.